Okay, good evening. Thank you for joining us at the planning board meeting for October 29th. Wow, that's loud. Um, so our first agenda item is 78 West Main Street, the bond release request. Um, I don't know if you have anything additional to share with us, Elaine, except for what's in the packet, or? So does anybody have any questions or comments on that? Do we have the applicant here? You are. You can come right up. Welcome. Please introduce yourself to us. Certainly. John Cusick with Bowler Engineering. Uh, Virginio Sardinia, uh, franchise owner. All right. Uh, and just if you want to briefly share with the public um, what the request is tonight. Yep. We're, um, we're just here before the, uh, the board looking for the uh, bond release for the, the project. I did a um, letter stating that the work uh, was, was completed, uh, provided an as-built survey uh, as, as well, and can really answer any, any questions that the board, board may have. Okay, just for the board's benefit, it's the Dunkin' Donuts on West May. That's yeah. correct. Okay. I need to step off because my son is a new employee of this organization. Congratulations, a son with a job. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have any particular questions? I don't have any. I have a question comment. Sure. Um, I just want to say that, that I think you guys did a really nice job of building. I think there's a lot of uh, maybe some skepticism in town. Um, and then that, the landscaping looks fantastic, the building itself, and I've heard a lot of very, very favorable, positive reviews from people. So I appreciate the, the extra work um, and to, to make it a, a, a nice build for the town. Thank you. Yeah, they, they, these guys do a, do a great job. Yes. Um, when when we see the word substantial compliance, does that mean that everything was done? Um, to the, uh, were there any outstanding things that Chuck said you can just kind of follow up and finish? Yeah. No. Everything everything is is completed. Um, okay. We just use the word substantial compliance. There's always just something that might be a little bit different than on the plan. We shifted five feet this way as opposed to that way, but the intent of the plans is is uh, fully completed. Anybody else? Yeah. Briefly, real quickly, I agree that the building looks nice. Um, I just have had comments from the public that the parking lot is is not great. So just for us all to know, I know this is way before and on the planning board, but that the traffic flow getting out is tough, and I have not experienced it yet myself. But anyway, I no objection to releasing the bond. <laughs> <coughs> what is the what is the difficulty with? Tra I've only been there when there was no traffic. Um, told is when you enter and you drive around and can't find a parking spot because apparently maybe because it's so new they can't find spots that you have to go back out onto the street in order to come back in the lot to go around a second time to look for a parking spot and I don't know why it was chosen to do that we did it that way or not but, but probably too late now <laughs> I'm guessing you were specifically specifically asked to do it that way or no it's just the, the way that the site laid out the, the land available to us Maybe it will not be quite as crowded um, when it's not so brand new. Yep. Is there, have you noticed any difficulty in, in the left-hand turn lane when you're going um, towards um, town, town on Main Street, getting in and out, is, uh, as far as the proximity to the um, light? I personally have, have, have not. I've, I've been to the site a few times and, and okay. drive through, but I haven't noticed any issues. Just wondering if that, you know, trying to get in and get out has, might have something to do with the traffic stopping right there. Do, do, just a question for the applicant. Do they have the ability to exit back out onto Elm Street out the backside and not have to? I think, I think they do, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think correct. that's where they are. Is that so where they the are street, You'd have to turn around, though, around. to do that, right? And there's not a lot of room to turn around, probably, right? Uh, yeah, you can get back out through, through Elm Street. I, I think as you, as you come in, if you take a, you know, take a left, and there's not a space there. there. There's a small area where you can do a, like a K turn and come back the other way, but some folks might just go out and circle back around. Through the chair? Yes. So, along that line of questioning, 
just for the future down the road, would there be an option, not cost-wise or anything, but feasibility-wise to, to make a full loop around the parking lot? I, I, I can't remember exactly what's on that set. The, uh, I guess that would be the west side of the property. So, yeah, on when you're staring at the, um, the property from, um, from, from Main Street, looking at the building, yes. you can get around it on the right-hand yes. side. You, you can't on the left. Right. Um, Is there a reason, though, to the chair? Yeah, the, the, just the, it's a property limit. Where, um, where the old road, the, the paper street, used to go through that area, um, half of it went to this side, the other half went to the other side. Because it does seem like it's halfway built, right? Like there's a little dead end there? Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay, thank you. Don't control that. And uh, I just have a comment, and not necessarily owners at all, but um, it is supposed to be no left turn when people are coming east on Main Street, left turn into the, um, the, um, the location. But I, I've already seen people turning left there, of course. <laughs> So, and the, uh, is the only control on that a sign? I don't even know. I, I came don't even in from know the... if there's a real prominent sign, but there's there's a little berm within the the entrance that you know it basically you have to go over it. It's not a huge thing mm -hmm. to, to overcome, probably because you know they need their Emergency trucks to go. Emergency vehicles. Yeah. Dunkin' Donuts has also put a they put a sign up to try and get people to turn left onto Home Street Extension there, but yeah, they try. It's it's hard to. When people just people see a Dunkin' see Donuts, tomorrow. they're just going to go to it. You know, they're not, <laughs> not going to necessarily read the signs that say no left turn. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, so I will entertain a motion to release the bond per their request. So moved. Uh, are there any further comments or questions? <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? You're all set. Thank, Thank you very you much. Yep. Appreciate your time. We have a few minutes before um, our continued public hearing for Buckland Street and Leonard Street. Is any, can I entertain a motion for the minutes to be approved? Of 10 1. Moved. Second. Is there any comments or questions? Uh, an amazing job, Kobe, again. Um, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, does anybody have, how about the chamberlain Whalen restriction curve? Does anybody have any questions on that following what was put in our packets? If there's any discussion, I'm going to step down. But if I, there's, I, if there's, if there's no business before the board, we're just kind of uh, get okay. clarity on it. So thank you, though. Anybody have any further comments or questions? I appreciate the um, detail that you gave us on it. And it will likely take a town meeting vote to uh, finalize. Okay. All right. So it's still in process, but it, the explanation in our packet at least showed how it all came to pass. Okay. Thank you, Elaine. <coughs> um, You can. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about SAC? We are going to talk about SAC tonight, okay. but I think we need more than, more than five that. minutes. Is that fair? That's fair. Yeah, yeah definitely. We're going to talk about SAC tonight. Um, does anybody have any future agenda items that they'd like to get on the agenda? I don't know if this would be a good place to talk about the website again. Sure. I yeah, questions. absolutely. Our liaison roles were not. Could least. you move your mic closer? Yeah. I'm sorry. On the Acela page on the town website, some of our liaison roles were not listed correctly. So I, just, I looked up in the minutes and I think I have them correct now. So Frank Durso is the CRAT alternate, correct? Uh, I am Design Review Board and I'm not a member of CRAT, so that needs to be removed. Fran DeYoung is the Open Space Preservation Commission rep. That's not list, or that is listed. Um, Deb is the Design Review Board, uh, which is listed correctly, but she's also the CRAT rep for the Planning board, and that is not listed. Um, Carol Dove does not have any other liaison roles yet, and neither does David Paul. Is that right? No, no liaison roles. No. No. 
Um, Muriel is no longer a CPC rep, right? So that needs to be removed. Mary um, is the CRO, or is listed as a CRO rep, but she's not. But she is the zoning advisory rep, which is not listed. And then Gary is the CPC rep this year, correct? Okay, so I'll send those along. Perfect. And Mike Trojan did take a photo, which uh, he sent me, that we can put up. Oh, nice. Awesome. How does it look? So we're all, our eyes are all open, but not everyone has a perfect smile. So well, <laughs> it's hard to get everybody with a perfect right. smile. Just well, more importantly, how do I look? You know, <laughs> that's right. Fabulous. You look fabulous. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> Okay, thanks for doing that, Amy. That's amazing. Um, does anybody else have any um, additions? Or there's no, uh, no other liaison roles? <coughs> I don't think. There is a board of selectmen meeting tomorrow that the Center School Abuse Committee uh, will be also uh, presenting at, or at least answering questions at. What kind of meeting? I'm sorry. Board of selectmen meeting. Ah, okay. Awesome. Okay, thank you. Um, Update. Um, would anybody be? Uh, I think I think we need to um, look at getting a master plan uh, update, just to touch base on the priorities in the master plan coming up pretty soon. That we looked at. Okay, so. It's updated in 2017, is that 17, right? 16, yeah. 17, 17, I think. Yeah. So the whole update is every 10 years, I think. But we need to look at the um, subcategories and the action items and so forth. I think. Okay, so I'm going to look at that for a future agenda item soon if we have some space. Um, just, just one other comment. That's also a really good, I think, starting point for the zoning advisory committee too. Yes. Um, to take a peek, take a walk through that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, does anybody have any uh, reports from their committees? Their liaison efforts. Okay. Have, has CPC been meeting? CPC has met. Um, <coughs> they had their first uh, public hearing. Um, number of items up for discussion. Most of them require some follow-up um, support from other boards and things. There's uh, nothing I think that's in, in, that's specifically relevant to, to this board at this point in time. Okay. Do you want to do design review? Sure, do you have an update? Or? Um, the last meeting of design review was um, last Monday. Um, it was a joint historic um, meeting um, and there were several signs that were reviewed. Um, I think the overall conversation was that some of the terminology of, um, of how, how we determine what signage goes on could possibly be um, determined through Zach. So there was some wording that I think needs to be looked at um, to help us help guide both committees. Okay. I think that was one. I don't remember now. Uh, what was it referring um, to? We were in, in reference to various um, signs downtown um, and um, how, how, how building codes and, and oh, signage meet and create a safe environment okay. for everybody. Okay. So I think that that was one of the questions um, that we were we need to look at the right before. But other than that, it was a really productive meeting. Um, very, very fun. So Good. we got to look at some tight fonts and things like that. Is the design review board going to send something to the ZAC, uh, like in a form of a request? or? We yeah. have, we've done that in the past. So I mm -hmm. guess at our next meeting, we should ask um, Jeff, the chair, to, to write it up. OK. Can I ask what might be an unpopular question? What's the fascination with blue signs now? <laughs> What do you, oh, well, businesses. yeah. So, um, design review, we just review and give feedback. We can't actually make them change their right. sign colors and things. Right. Which, right. It seems to be that exactly. we actually reviewed two blue signs. And there's three now, I think, right? It's the, the pizza, the, the muffin, too. and the yogurt. No, the muffin oh, sign is going to be the same color just as, oh. the, as Hopkin and Gourmet. Okay. It's going to be gold lettering. Okay. 
and that's in the historic district, so we have a lot more uh, say over what changes. Uh -huh. um, okay, but not the other side of the street. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you. Um, it is that time. I'll entertain a motion to open the continued public hearing for the Buckland Street and Leonard Street. So Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? <clears throat> okay, so do we have the proponents for Buckland and Leonard Street here? Good evening. <coughs> My name is uh, Lou Petrosi. I'm Wall Street Development Corp. And I have with me tonight uh, project engineer Rob Truex with uh, GLM Engineering. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I believe we have two uh, applications in front of the board. One is a uh, stormwater management permit. Mm -hmm. And the second is a petition to uh, construct a private uh, paper Paper Street, which is Buck Buckland Street, located uh, just off of uh, Pleasant Street. Right. And um, so we're here to discuss the uh, stormwater aspects of the plan. Okay. Uh, we did receive uh, comments from Beta late Thursday afternoon or Friday, so we have not made any uh, revisions mm -hmm. to the plan uh, or addressed any of those comments. Um, so we fully anticipate to come back at another subsequent sure. meeting. Uh, but we can hear the board's uh, comments concerning any okay. So just for, from a process point of view, for the board members and for the public, um, because we had so often continued this hearing, we did allocate five minutes, but what we're going to do is we're going to um, op open the meeting and, and leave it open. We're going to um, have 20 minutes for the continued public hearing for Whisper Way. Um, and for sure, because we've had um, neighbors in at each meeting hoping to have their say, we're going to leave enough time um, for folks who are here to speak to this to be able to speak. Um, and then we'll continue it to the next Yes, the next that's, time. that's fine with us. We're, okay. we're here for the okay. duration. Thank you. Yep. You have a couple of minutes if you want to start. I don't know what makes no, sense, but we wait until. Okay, you can uh, probably leave that right there. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have the go get Mr. Nation. That would be great. Just for clarity, uh -huh. Chair, so we'll open the 750 meeting, and how long will that? We're going to have about 20 minutes for that because we for don't have resubmitted plans. We just have Give another. 10, roughly? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate it. And I'm always uh, willing to have somebody help me out on the time, too. Yeah. are very sensitive tonight. I really sensitive. I know because of much background noise. How do we sound on the, over the, over the, yeah, it's, we're, we're getting a lot of feedback. Does it sound okay there? Okay. I'm, I think that's a good idea though. I'm putting mine down too. I don't know. I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it back. No, it's, it's hard to hear. It's hard to understand what you're saying. On TV, or when we're speaking right yes. here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is better. Yeah. 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 Okay. Welcome. Hi. Go ahead and introduce yourself <clears throat> for us, please. Hazel, Gary, and Helma. Mark Ronald with Goddard Consulting. Hi. 
Um, what would pass oh, the I'm going to actually entertain a motion to open the continued public hearing for Whisper Way. So moved. A second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, sorry about that. Procedural point. Uh, we had tonight to discuss a few things. We're going through the process with conservation right now. And mm -hmm. one of the things that we're looking to do is uh, to minimize wetland impacts <coughs> is to inside of the breakaway five feet to the north. Uh, this, isn't, this won't really be felt when you're driving down the road. Right away right now is 50 feet. What we're looking to do is mimic the right away that's proposed throughout the rest of the subdivision that's a 40 foot right away. So by sliding the road to the north by the five feet uh, towards the existing whisper way, if you look on the plan you can see a, uh, where the existing whisper way, that's the dotted uh, road that goes in off of Wood Street. Mm -hmm. The red line is where we had originally proposed it. What we're doing is to shift it to the north uh, by the five feet, we're allowed to reduce the wetland impacts on the south side of the road on the retaining wall side by about 500 square feet. That's the green lines? Three green, green lines? Yes, the two green lines would be the proposed road. Like I said, driving down the road, you'd, you'd never know that you were five feet off. Um, what we're looking to do is get your blessing on that tonight so we can go back to conservation with this <coughs> and um, be able to proceed knowing that we would have the backing of the planning board so that we're not going back and forth constantly between these. Um, it's kind of a dance going between the two boards and... You know. Yeah, I, I fully appreciate that. I just want to make sure I articulate for uh, the process for the board and for um, the folks at home too. It's, you know, we just got the plans. We don't have any feedback from our, our engineers, certainly. Um, so it isn't, we can talk in general terms, informational terms, and you, and you, you can find out if anybody has any known objections, right. but it's not as though we can um, approve this part of the, the plan. And I understand that what you're trying to get done, I, I understand the challenge, I, I right. truly do. Um, and just for the record and for the future, um, it's a it's a better presentation for the board and the, I know you don't have members of the public coming to this hearing but when we do certainly if we can have the whole plan and they need to be in by the Tuesday before the meeting on the Monday. Um, I, know I had emailed this to Georgia last week. Uh, I believe it went out into packets. Yeah. Did this one go on the yeah, I have. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, but to, to that point, I thought it was different from what's in the packet, but when you explained it, it, it explained what's actually in the packet, which is, I guess, color. the same thing. We had asked for the color when we were looking at it at the preview well, meeting. It's in, it's in color it's, there, it's too. In color. But mm -hmm. yep. Well, for, the, for oh, this, what I saw, it wasn't. But, but your earlier point is we do need feedback, I think. I know from DPW because it's uh, 135. Well, I think that's Mass Highway too, isn't it? From right, um, DPW and Mass Highway. I'm almost positive they won't have an issue with where this lays out on Wood Street. Um, there's plenty of sight distance looking both ways. The grades work similar to almost exact to what we had proposed originally. Um, so as far as I'm very confident that. We won't have any issues with Mass Highway or with Hopkinton um, DPW. When do you see CONCOM next? So there's a meeting tomorrow night. We're going to have some just some back and forth on a few questions we have for them, just to clarify on some last minute items, and then we're preparing to submit um, within a week from that tomorrow night, um, so they can have a, a full functional meeting in two weeks. Have they seen the updated plan? Is that are they going to be? They have not, um, but they have requested that we do as, as many alternatives and analysis as possible. And in the first meeting we had, they wanted the road pushed towards the original Whisper Way layout that's there because it's existingly impacted buffer zone. Uh, and so their desire was to, to push it even farther than what we're, we're asking for, which is they wanted to push it onto the actual halt property and, the con and the, with the conservation restriction. And, 
and we've um, been hesitant. We've spoken with Halt, and we're hesitant to do that just because the the multiple hurdles that that requires to turn from uh, altering a conservation restriction. So we uh, we looked at this alternative, considering that we have a 40 foot right of way, and just shifting the road towards where the existing layout is. Um, and we're just looking for um, at least some positive feedback, at least if, if the board's amendable to this, knowing that the engineers may need to comment. Uh, if we know that the board isn't going to oppose the engineers uh, in this, uh, would be helpful for us. Questions yes. to the chair. So by making it looks like you're maintaining uh, a certain amount of wet, correct? Correct. Is there any impact on the, the north side? Right, as you make that shift, there's no impact to any wetland. There's n there's no impact to the north. Through the chair, um, I tend to think this is probably okay. I'm, it, it, your explanation, especially earlier, uh, clarified some things. And just f for specificness, through the chair, it's a five foot shift uh, to the west. North. Uh, well, north north west. West. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for clarity, that that's kind of sums it up. To the chair. Yes. Um, I believe that the impact to the north is the um, correct <coughs> the the, um, the abutter the um, setback from abutter. Is that true? Is there is there a the abutting I, property, is there um, Is halt property? It's halt property and we would still be within the existing right of way that was the private, the, the right of way that's there already existing for the, the gravel path that goes up. Right, but that was, that, that's not within the normal setback from a side, another abutter property, is it? Even the existing, uh, Again, I may be remembering this wrong, but I thought from the original plans um, that that was one of the waivers requested was the setback because of that road. Because Tell of the pike, I think. Hmm? Because of the, the highway. Just the highway on the other side? I think that was the only one, was it okay. not? Uh, we had one waiver up in the far back where we were looking to, where we actually abut up against the property. Um, to the, the town of Forest. <coughs> up, by the parking, up by the parking area, right? Just past that, where yeah. it takes that sharp horseshoe. Yeah. yeah. So I was going to bring this one. My apologies. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, no worries. <coughs> so I have a question. Now, what is CONCOM asking you to do? What, what, are their, what is their suggestion that would be more, um, more challenging? So the commission is asking that that we maximize the use of existing disturbed areas. So um, basically, so the existing whisper way is, is a disturbed area on both sides has some disturbance. And the further you get away from that existing alignment, um, the, clo the you start getting to more natural areas. Um, and that, so that includes wetland impacts, but also impacts to the buffer zone. So um, the commission wanted us to maximize that disturbance area. So we've been um, looking at at feasible ways um, to basically reduce that and in this case just shifting it five feet so it's not center line with the 50 foot but more kind of a foot more like the 40 foot if the 40 foot was on the north side that would just allow again just to reduce impacts um, to to wetland resource areas I just want to be clear too. To hold, on, hold on one second yeah I'm not really sure how that impacts the the adjacent property how does that impact what they were requesting <coughs> Oh, I think the, the request, the, the, the previous request that Dan was talking about, it, it refers to another, another section of roadway at the top of the project. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm telling Dave. More a question for the board than, than the applicant. Is there any harm in saying you can propose your plan this way and, and send it through for review this way? If they're looking at it and saying it's a, it's a better alternative for the CONCOM and for the property, is there any harm in having it reviewed moved over five feet. Fair question, yeah. I just wanted more clarity on what the ComCon was suggesting. Were they suggesting more than five feet moving to the north? They would have liked more, but because we know that um, we, we, the, we, we know the planning board has been very um, gracious to this project and in the, in the, the location of the roadway, 
Um, we felt that we wanted to keep the roadway and the, the, the slopes that relate to that roadway on the right of way just for um, the, the, the typical use of land. Thanks. So I think it's a fair question. Uh, is there any reason that um, I, we can't uh, we can't necessarily bless it tonight? But I don't know that I'm not hearing any any strong objections to looking at this as an alternative if it makes better sense for your project. Well, that's what we're looking mm -hmm. for. So thank you. Yeah. Is that? I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So we had one other item um, that we wanted to discuss. Um, so this is relates to the, uh, the the sidewalks um, that were proposed. So. Um, um, the original layout had um, sidewalks going um, all around the project, and we, the commission and the board has reviewed um, our request and get granted that the, the three-foot grass strip being removed from the crossing areas. Um, so we were again discussing with the commission on on how to reduce um, <coughs> turbids in the buffer zone, um, and particularly along Wood Street, and also so um, so this uh, is just a. Um, Full project sketch. You can see um, the sidewalks that are um, proposed. So, uh, as it, just wait for the, to get around them. Um, so, uh, so you see Wood Street there, um, and the two sidewalks that come off Wood Street onto the project are in purple. Um, those are the the ones that go up to those first two crossings on each side, and uh, and then you go into that orange section, which is the area that has the, the three uh, that has the rest of the sidewalk there. What we're looking to do is, is to propose, um, in replace of doing a sidewalk on Wood Street, is to, to, to create a connectivity through the development by doing a, uh, a nature walking path, um, which is that brown walking line right through the middle of the project. So that basically provides a very nice uh, natural space um, through the, uh, the woods and along the wetlands there. Uh, we did show this to the commission at their last meeting, um, and they really liked um, the idea of a more natural um, walking area um, versus uh, uh, having more sidewalk um, uh, related to the project just because it does create a loop that allows um, all the homeowners to make a full loop um, if they so desire um, or they can just use the sidewalk that's um, proposed there in orange and purple um, and then um, not doing the sidewalk along Wood Street which is, is very tight um, up to the, uh, the wetlands there uh, there's guardrails and other things that would uh, that were concerned about uh, having wetland impacts potentially. If I may. Sure, go ahead. Uh, the idea of having the sidewalk on Wood Street was to um, connect neighbors, neighborhoods, and uh, that's why it was brought up, and that's why it was uh, acceptable and included in the project. Um, however, the trail is, uh, is a good idea, and I might be open to at least a designated walking area uh, with the heavy paint or something, but we need feedback from the DPW on this uh, and Conservation Commission. What can be done to make Wood Street a safer area? And one of the uh, advantages of having a sidewalk, it's a lot safer to walk on a sidewalk along a busy street, um, but maybe something like that could be worked out. Uh, just letting go of the idea of having a sidewalk, uh, we should consider having uh, some sort of safety, safe walking area designation along Wood Street somehow. Uh, I don't like seeing that abandoned at all. Brandon, you have some? I have a question to the chair. Mm -hmm. um, two things. What is the distance of this proposed walking path? The, the length? That length. Um, Quarter mile, shorter mile. That I'd say, cool, probably less I'd than. I'd say probably about. about a cool, yeah, thousand, thousand feet. feet. Yeah, thousand feet. And, and, and the the, uh, the surface would be crushed stone, or be um, it would just be it'd be on grade, a nature, uh, it'd be a pure nature walk. So yep. So it wouldn't be maintained during the winter. No. Accessible. So um, yes, I mean it's it's a walking path like a trail in, in, a, in a in a town for in a town forest or a conservation land. Through the chair. Yes. Can you just explain the difference between the purple and the orange sidewalks again? Where so I, I I did that um, simply just to kind of show the connectivity of the orange with the walking trail, um, and the purple is are basically the uh, extensions of the the sidewalk that go down to Wood Street. Okay. But um, just to be clear, those. 
would remain even with the proposed <coughs> trail going across. That's that that is currently what um, is is proposed. Mm -hmm. um, we do know conservation again. Does it, the conservation is not in favor of those sidewalks, the purple sidewalks. They don't see the need for them um, from a neighborhood connectivity in the sense of just walking around the neighborhood. Um, and uh, homeowners in that area, they don't. They, if you're if you're wanting to enjoy nature, the wood, the walking trail there is going to be much more amenable than walking down to to Wood Street, which is pretty tra pretty well trafficked. Um, and so. Um, they they would they 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 would like to see more, um, but they also know that the planning board can't always grant those requests. Did you say that they're not in favor of the purple section? Yes. Because um, I was going to say I I really like the idea of the walking trail because there's still connectivity even though the people don't have to go out on the busy street. I would hope that we could keep the purple section of the sidewalk though. Are, are there any houses along the purple section of the no. sidewalk? No. Oh, there are not. I was just thinking, kids waiting for the bus and would you know be better if they're on yep. the sidewalk, not um, on the road. Yeah, if would, there's no houses. To the chair, I would echo that. Keeping those, I mean, it is part of our um, our design that we require sidewalks along the along the street. So I would I would encourage keeping those sidewalks as well. And through the chair, I would agree with both of those points. Um, I do like the walking trail, and and I understand um, not maintaining it in the winter, but that definitely purple. Oh, can I just add? I, I understand that we may have to get rid of the sidewalks on Wood Street. That was I thought that is a nice to have, but if it, it was so close to the wetlands and the guardrail, I understand if we can't have them on on Wood Street. But I would like to keep them in the neighborhood. Um, on behalf of um, what what the Concom might be thinking is that it's because it's so close to the wetlands, um, the critters need to be able to cross, and it's that barrier that would create that. So perhaps there's a different method in creating a sidewalk, and, you know, like we were talking about, you know, painted lines or some kind of a, a guard, a baller to, you know, for safety for, for the, the, the neighborhood to, to, um, to walk on um, might be a, a good solution as far as something that um, both both or both would look at as valuable. Um, so I don't know if you'd be interested in looking at something like that because I think that's what Hong Kong's probably um, concerned with is the connectivity for the um, little critters. Are you talking about Wood Street or before we before hold on, we hold on. No, hold on. the purple, I, 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 the purple, the purple like the, all around the second, wetlands. I, I lost track of the question. I'm sorry. The, the, the statement was that I can understand what CONCOM was, was trying to approach and I respect that and that there might be other solutions that might be a good combination of both with, with line markings or tapes and maybe bollards yeah. um, to create a safe, safe way. Okay, and I'm sorry. Uh, just uh, I want to make a point that I think that we should agree as a, as a group before we ask them to suggest something like that because I kind of feel strongly that we need the sidewalks. We've had many discussions <coughs> off-site about <coughs> funding to get sidewalks, so I would, I would strongly uh, encourage that we keep those sidewalks. The, the one on 135? No, 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 not the one on 135. Okay. I, I just wanted to yeah, clarify. Yeah, sorry, I, I wasn't no. there. No, I, I don't think that's really the responsibility of this development. We had originally asked that as a nice to have but there's there's complications with that, and we've seen it with Roy over on uh, East Main Street the same way. And it it really, as a town, we need to solve that problem. We still haven't even figured out what side of um, 135 we want the sidewalks on. If mm -hmm. you look at the, the DPW, they switched to the other side. <coughs> and are we going to yeah. switch back? We, we just, just need a better plan. I'll just make the the larger point too. We've seen it a, a few places in places where we really do want to encourage walkability. So at some point, we need to. Um, we need to sort of come to grips with what we were, are willing to ask people to make sure they do even consider we had it at Golden Pond because of their water and the way that their, their, um, their parking lots are constructed and so forth and that's a very desirable spot for there to be continuous walkability and, and I can understand on 135 this little section is maybe not as big a priority but um, in general I think it's a priority for the taxpayers in Hopkinton to have that. So, so unrelated to this, okay. um, just going back to your previous question of other things to discuss, I think one thing that might be worth us reviewing is the sidewalk plan mm -hmm. for town, because I think mm -hmm. it's going to continue to be a dialogue, and I think <coughs> planning there will help us 
make smarter decisions yeah. about where we're pushing for sidewalks. But um, just to the just to the hold point. on a second, we'll just let him finish. Um, and I, I did have a question to the chair. Mm -hmm. um, actually, two questions. Um, number one, it looks like the, the walking path has a <coughs> substantial impact on lot 13. And I'm wondering if you can comment on that. And I'll just ask my second question as well. I'm wondering if there's an option to upgrade that nature path to something a little bit more um, and I guess maintainable. I'm maintainable. Uh, I hesitate to use the word access accessible because I don't, I'm guessing it's probably going to be unrealistic from a slope perspective to make it ADA compliant. Um, but something that's a little bit more permanent than just, uh, you know, a, a walking path through the, I mean, uh, you know, just a, a, a single track sort of pathway through the woods. So uh, to the first question, um, the impact of lot 13. So um, lot, uh, lots 12, 13, and 14 all have vernal pool buffer zones of 125 feet. So the nature trail is set 75 feet into the woods of those lots, and there will be 75, there will be, uh, 70, there will be 70, about 75 feet of woods between that white trail and the tree clearing line of any of those houses because of conservation setbacks. Um, so the conservation won't let us, uh, we're working very hard to, to basically protect everything within the 125 foot buffer to vernal pools on site. Uh, so that's the first question. The second question um, on, on upgrading the trail. So um, to your point, it is, you can propose different things. Um, there's sites that'll do stone, uh, stone dust paths. Um, those are, are a good solution when you have relatively flat grades um, once you start seeing any type of slopes, um, it gets um, harder to maintain during large storms because they do they, you, they will see runoff and, and erosion. Um, and so um, our perspective on basically allowing it to be a, a natural trail on grade allows it to be a very functional nature walk um, that can be can be semi-maintained um, as a as a like a, a forest trail would be. Um, but uh, any other materials um, gets more complex with actually constructing it as well. <coughs> so then if I could just make a comment about that, this is just my, my opinion, but if the objective here is connectivity with the sidewalks, then I think it needs to be upgraded from a nature trail to something that's more maintainable, you know, even if it has some, some steps of some kind, or I mean, you know, I used to do a lot of hiking, you see things it's, like that, but I, I think there's probably, it probably needs to be something more than a, uh, just a, a trail. That's just my opinion. But. I want to just make the point that we are going to wrap up in a couple of minutes, but I do. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, what is the uh, elevation change between one side and the other? Um, elevation change from one side to the other. It's, it's, I, I would just, let's see here, hold on. Um, And asking the tough question. I think it might be. Yeah. It's probably around tw uh, 20 feet, maybe, at most, because um, I've got I've got a three, um, just below 388, and I'm going up to um, just over. Uh, oh, actually, no, under 400. So it's actually very close to the same, at least end to end. There is there is um, some dip. So for example, um, behind where lot 12 and 13 join. There is a little bit of a valley there, um, which we, we curve the, the nature trail to kind of follow that natural valley kind of around there. And um, then it goes up a little higher and then it goes, it dips down. The lowest point is down um, near the middle where you can see that little break in the line. That's actually, there's a boardwalk right there over the little wetland that, that comes down from above there um, and comes back. So that's down to about 380. So. Um, about below 380 is, is the lowest point, just below 380, and it goes up to just above 388. Thank you. I'll so, so eight feet hold tall. On, hold on, Kara. I just, um, I'm going to be the contrary voice on the board. I think that connectivity is incredibly important. I love the little path through here, but I don't think connectivity that only works for certain months out of the year really constitutes connectivity in you know, response to Mr. Paul's comment about um, the legacy farms, we've asked them to figure it out, and I would personally appreciate it if you took a long, hard look to see how you can make the thing work on Wood Street. But again, that's just my personal opinion on it. Um, so we're going to wrap up. Does anybody else want to give some feedback? Uh, just quickly uh, answer some of the uh, questions, or at least 
respond to some of the questions. Uh, the trail being um, a nature trail, I think would be important for the horses, because there's a horse corner turnaround here, uh, <coughs> to get to the town property on the uh, western side. Um, and when I'm talking about having a sidewalk area on Wood Street, it could be a raised curb area with enough space for someone to walk between the curb area and the guardrail. It doesn't have to go further into the wetland. Um, it just has to be safer for people to walk along Wood Street. Um, and that was, some, that was really key. And that's why we need, we need also need some feedback from the DPW. Can we do that? Will the state allow something like that? Which they do in different areas. Uh, but is that something that could work here? We need, I think we'd have to have some feedback from our DPW. So we are, yeah. I was just going to say, on the site walk, I thought we looked at that and that it would really cut into the shoulder quite a bit, which would make it less safe for bikes if bikes. we bumped in. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. it's tough. I, so I was, I was going to say, that, is that the same thing you were going to say, I think? Um, I was going to say the same thing, although <clears throat> um, just from my perspective, and I know this isn't very definitive for you folks, and I, I'm sorry about that, but at least you're getting the feedback. Um, I, you know, I'd like to, um, I'd like to see what does work. Certainly, this is a, a problem that has solved some places, um, and what can work there. And I wouldn't want to sacrifice, um, particularly bike safety either. It is a very uh, prominent uh, bike location, um, and I, <clears throat> I really like the idea of a path through the property. Truly, um, but. Um, I have, I have real um, hesitation using it, as Carol put, for connectivity. And for me, it's, it's, um, it's that it's not really usable necessarily by everybody and certainly not every season. What is the town's rule for snow removal in the winter? Does the town plow all the town sidewalks or are homeowners required to no, the town does not plow all sidewalks. I'm pretty sure. I'm sure of that. Usually, it's a covenant where you are. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm, I don't actually want to get diverted in this meeting, but that is a question that that John Westerling could answer for you in a flash. Okay. And he'd, he'd be happy to do that. Okay. Okay. All right. When do we have an, another period of time? <coughs> December? And what do we have on November 19th? Do we have space or no? We have the 9th we have continued from here to Wilson Street, Down Street, Yeah. applications. But what we have our plan is that we haven't given a specific time yet. So we have a pretty open agenda on the 19th? No. No? I'm sorry. Did I misunderstand what you just said to me? 9.15 is open. Um, okay, yeah. So if there, is a, there is an hour available on the 19th. Yeah. Because one of the hearings will be continued. Yeah. yeah. So 7.45, uh, because we've already got a request to continue. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to continue uh, the Whisper Way um, public hearing to 7.45 on November 19th. Second. All those in favor? Can we have a little discussion on that? Before we you vote? can, yes. I guess, I'm not sure if we've given them enough direction on the side box, because we've said Doesn't, all the things. We, we don't have enough time. We don't have time, okay. Right. So I didn't know. And it is a piecemeal thing, and I have a relatively small amount of sympathy for this approach, too, personally. Um, any other discussions? Um, all those in favor for the continuance to 745? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, we also need uh, an extension on the decision. Is that correct, Elaine? Yes. yes. Yeah. So, um, what would make sense if this is continued to the 19th? Two weeks beyond the 19th. Doing that math. <clears throat> We're December 3rd. Something like that. Yeah, second or third. Um, so, is that amenable? The decision being due. In the area of early December. Okay, so thank you for that. Thank you. Need to vote on that? No, we just need to agree. <coughs> I think it's
Look at my map. Nailed it. Richard, I think it's a good idea what Gary was suggesting about the, the plan of the sidewalks. I would better address that little section if I knew what side of the street we were planning on putting sidewalks. Uh, so t tell me again what the suggestion is that you think is a good idea. I'm sorry. No, to have the meeting with the DPW yeah. to, for no, the planning to for the actually, sidewalks. Yep, I agree. So I agree. Future agenda. Okay, um, Buckman and Leonard, come on back. <clears throat> So just so you can sort of, we can all sort of budget our time, we have until 8.50 for this, so we have a half an hour, and I want to at least leave 10 minutes for our neighbors who have come. Sure, absolutely. Okay. All right. Take us away. Introduce yourself. Well, as I mentioned, I have uh, our project engineer, Rob Truex, uh, okay. with GLM Engineering, and he'll uh, discuss the, I guess the uh, biggest permit is the stormwater management permit. And <coughs> So there's also a petition to construct a paper street. And comments from the uh, town uh, review, the peer review we just received on Friday or Thursday afternoon. So we haven't addressed any of those comments. So we're here basically to just make an initial presentation, hear the leaders, and come back to the subsequent meeting. Perfect. Okay. okay. For the record, Rob Truex of GLM Engineering Consultants. Mm -hmm. I think everyone's familiar where the site is. Do I need to go through the locus, or I think we're all familiar with that? No, I, I know exactly <laughs> sort of where it is, but I can never, like, locate it when I'm on the street. Buc Buc Buckland Street essentially comes out, uh, intersects at Pleasant Street between house number 60 and 62. Okay. It extends in about <clears throat> 700 feet. Um, I forget, it's, uh, it's east. The purpose is a Maybe bring it over here. Actually, bring it over here, then we can. Nope. nope. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. That's fine. What can we put on the TV? Okay, perfect. Good. Uh, our original submission was uh, for five lots uh, to be created on um, the property, but subsequent to our doing additional um, soil testing on the property, we determined that the drainage proposed previously was not going to be practical uh, situation so we've essentially revised the drainage to incorporate a, a single detention basin and that took up one of the lots so now we're down we're proposing four lots um, to be constructed on this property it's part of like I'll, I'll go through a quick brief so as you can see up on the board um, there's four proposed homes. Uh, the road does extend in from Pleasant Street. <clears throat> so what we're proposing to do is uh, the roadway is going to be 20 feet wide, paved width. As you come in from Pleasant Street and get in towards the site, we're proposing to super elevate the road to one side, which would be towards the proposed homes. We're not proposing any curving. So we want to sheet flow all that water to one side of the roadway. And what we're doing is what we would call somewhat of a country drainage system. <clears throat> so along the edge of the road, down this side, we're creating a swale, which goes underneath each driveway with a public property. And we have about a eight to 10 foot wide grass strip along the edge of the road to filter out you know, the sediments before it goes down into the swale. And then the swale is gonna direct the water down to the drainage basin, which is at the end of the property at the lower elevation as you can see, which was to be lot five, which was that fifth home, which we've now eliminated to uh, accommodate the basin. The basin's approximately three feet deep at the deepest point, uh, next to the top of the berm from the bottom of the basin, which during a flood event can only be two feet of water in the basin itself. We did some soil testing. You can see the test pits that travel down along the side of the road are within the swale, and a couple within the drainage basin. And basically, the, the water table out there is approximately two feet below the surface, and on the average, right below the subsoil. Fully draining soils, um, water table sitting on top of the soil, not infiltrating very well in that area. So, that basin is not excavated into the ground. The drainage wheel basically sits on right along the top of the existing elevations, and it's the same with the drainage basin. The bottom of the basin is the existing ground elevation. Um, it's not dug in, it's not 
dug into the water table, so we're maintaining that two foot of separation between the bottom of the basin and the actual bottom of uh, the water table itself. The sewer system is going to extend from Pleasant Street into the site. The first three homes will have gravity sewer system out to that proposed line. The fourth home will have an ejector pump in the front yard that will pump up to the manhole, which is located up here. This is the last manhole we're able to service via gravity. So the last house will have a pump system that will go up to that. <clears throat> we show a water system also coming in with a hydrant at the end, the eight inch water line, which services to the houses. And we are doing some roof runoff in the front yards of each house. If you can see on the board, we have these recharge systems. So they're, they're there to accommodate the recharge requirement for the uh, DEP stormwater management regulations. So each home will have its own recharge system as well. And they're located in the front yard. And primarily, that, that's a quick overview. Uh, answer any questions you might have. Oh, uh, no, first, we're not even there yet, yeah. I was going to ask Elaine for some input on to the zoning on this, but totally. let me know when. No, totally. That's she's next. She's okay, up next. Cool. <laughs> <clears throat> um, just any uh, any comments, and then Dave had a particular question. I don't have anything to add other than what Georgia wrote in the, the memo regarding okay. this. Sure. Um, so, what, can you describe the zoning? Is it residence A? I believe it's residence A. So, what do you need a furniture sign? One hundred feet. And they don't need that, or? They do. No, no, we, we do, do meet that. No. We meet the zoning requirements. <coughs> just That's to, to like clarify. Just, just those like six feet across there, and then we're No, each, each of the lots have 100 feet of frontage, and uh, I think the lot area requirement is uh, 15,000 square feet public water. I should say, too, for purposes of the applicant and the public, um, that we have four members that are not eligible to vote on this, but certainly el eligible to ask questions and participate in the discussion. So just for the record, Carol Dever, Deb Fine Brew, Mary Larson Marlowe, and Gary Trendell are not eligible to vote on the stormwater piece. Just, okay. just timing, yeah. when you opened the hearing and when they joined us, I believe. Go ahead, I interrupted somebody. I was all yes, okay. answer my questions, thank okay. you. I, I will say though that it's our intention for this uh, roadway to remain private with a homeowners association that will be responsible for the maintenance of the stormwater management facilities and the roadway plowing and any other maintenance that's required. So there would be no uh, responsibility on the part of the town going forward. Does the town have a particular position, Elaine, on roadways remaining private? Is that totally a typical? No, but the this board has the ability to, if you were to approve that, to require that it remain private. I mean, the lack of a turnaround would be one reason, perhaps, for snow plowing and so forth, um, that the town may not want to, to be responsible for that. Okay, so it would be in perpetuity the homeowners association's responsibility. <coughs> if you keep it private, is is there an issue with the fire department and access during like storms if it's not properly maintained? It could be. It could be an issue. So at this time, we usually have um, our consultant come forward and give a mm -hmm. their review. Yes. Hi. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Hi, Jillian. Welcome. Hi. I'm Jill Bilkoff with Beta Group. I'm filling in for Phil on this particular project. Um, so a couple of our comments for this project where we were looking for a little more information on topography, specifically at the connection of Buckland and the existing road. Um, we had some concerns about how the road might fit there and the grading on either side. Um, we had a couple of comments on the 
hydrology model, the HydroCAD for this. Uh, we're looking to get some more information to possibly expand um, the watershed for this to really take a better look at existing and proposed um, drainage patterns um, and kind of how that might affect the design of the size of the pipes, the culverts under the proposed driveways. Um, overall, we were recommending uh, to request a meeting to discuss the comments with the applicant. Um, just to kind of clarify a few things, I think that might be faster. Is that some, something you would welcome? Yes, we would. Can would I like to him any work. objections to them working directly? Okay. So definitely great. make yourself. That would be great. Thank you. Um, at this time in the uh, public hearing outline process, we usually invite um, members of the planning board and members of the public to add to the outline. So I'll extend that to the members of the planning board first. Yes. Through the chair? Yes. Um, although this does not directly relate to the stormwater management plan, um, I just wanted to clarify. It does appear that three of the four houses, as well as the drainage basin at the end of the street, are within the 50 foot buffer zone for those wetlands. Is that correct? That's I read that correct. correctly. Okay. And um, I can eyeball the 25 foot zone, which is like the no build zone. Mm -hmm. but, but can you clarify whether or not the houses proposed are within that 25 foot bolt? Um, um, I'm, I'm not quite it's sure. It's not we're, out shown on the plan, but we're outside. We're outside the uh, 25 on all, with regard to all of the houses. Okay. And um, we're within 100 within the 100 foot buffer with all of the construction of the houses. The roadway itself is outside the 100 foot buffer, but the drainage facilities are within the 100 foot buffer. If that. And the drainage facilities are within the 50 foot buffer. Um, the drainage some, basin and the four bay. Right, yeah. correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. Do you see CONCOM when? Well, we were going to see them tomorrow night. And yeah. We've been, you know, the process has been continued because of our drainage uh, retesting. So. so this is your first meeting with CONCOM? Oh, yeah, pretty much. Yes. So, Chair, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned what you called the, the, the country road drainage or would you refer that as? Um, so I guess I'm just curious if you looked at, at other drainage options. So at um, this point, if I could just ask if we can work on the agenda, if we're going to expand the agenda, and then we'll ask specific questions as we go through it. Right. That's all. That's all. I, don't, I have no objection That's to the fair. question. Yep. So for clarification for this agenda, which is so are here. We, we're adding to the outline now? Or um, okay. It's concerning two things, specifically the wastewater treatment and the, the paper road designation itself. So um, uh, according to this, we have 10 different things, uh, one of them being to close the public hearing. Um, I think we should have uh, perhaps an area for more feedback from the CONCOM uh, specifically. Uh, it is um, under detailed discussion E. Oh, I see. Yes, E. Thank you. I don't have my glasses today. So that covers my concern. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Technically, this is an A and R. So uh, I, I don't know if it technically is an A and R. There will be an A and R at the end. Okay. If it's but so I think mm -hmm. my point being that we'll be, we are limited to what we can add to the agenda. So. So you will be um, approving a design for construction of the road. And that's part of that. Um, would, this is a stormwater uh, hearing. Where do we necessarily tackle the street, the paper street? I think it's under road and lot layout design. So it, we could break that out. Road design. Yeah, I just think that the roadway is uh, the, the bigger discussion. I gotta read my glasses. Yeah. Yeah. Just from a clarification standpoint, are we looking at everything once and then voting on two separate things? I believe that we will vote on two separate things. That's my understanding. There will be two separate votes. But it will just be one piece of information before we get to the two votes. 
And as a follow-up, I, I presume public safety would fall under road and lot layout design, or does that need to be a separate issue? I think issue? that to be a separate. <coughs> Anybody else on the board adding to the agenda or the outline? Um, so I'd invite the members of the public. Um, the outline is part of the packet. Um, we have several um, sub-detailed discussions. One is road and lot layout design, stormwater management, utilities, municipal water and sewer, waiver requests, and the Conservation Commission review. We also include a separate area for public comment after all of the discussion has happened for the public hearing. Um, but do, does any member of the public want to add to the outline at this point? Uh, for the record, my name is Peter Barberi, uh, attorney with Fletcher Kelton, uh, representing two of the immediate uh, abutters on each side of the proposed improvements. I'll briefly summarize the correspondence you have, and I've provided a copy to, to the applicant. Yeah. yeah. Um, basically, we take exception uh, objection on, on two bases. One is one is the right to make the improvements in and of itself, and I know uh, various. Documents have been provided to the town over the course of the years. Mr. Barbieri, can I yep. just say, I, we are going to hear you fully out. We're just adding to the outline right now, so we are totally going to hear you at the okay, so time. All I'm saying is yep. we, we have some additional information that thing. We would ask that you forward it to council, ask yep. for his review. Uh, in the other items, I think you've already talked about making sure that Beta's comments from the viewpoint of drainage are all addressed, because we have significant current concerns mm -hmm. from the viewpoint of if improvements are made, what drainage could be there and impact the abutting property. So okay. if those things are moving forward, then we'll see what the results of all those are. Okay, thank you so much. You. So as far as an outline, a council review, discussion of council review? I did actually put legal review, and I'm not quite sure how we want to necessarily hold on to that for purposes of a public hearing, but I did leave a note that we're going to need to wrestle with that. It, this 1935, we have 1999. We have no, right. And I just, I mean, I think that that's a, I don't think that that's a typical agenda item, but I think for outline item, but for this one, it makes sense that we give that a full hearing. Thank you. Yes, sir. Actually, you know what, Mr. Terry, the problem is that people at home can't hear you. Can you come forward? We can hear you, but then folks at home might not be able to. And we like your sweatshirt. Thank you. Go socks. <laughs> <laughs> so, Madam Chairman, thank you. Yes. Board members, thanks for inviting me. <coughs> um, the question is, are we having, are you people going to vote? The five remaining members. Are you have two votes tonight. Did I hear Elaine say? We are unlikely to get two votes tonight, Mr. Terry. We are really right now just um, setting the outline and for the detailed discussion that is going to come. But there will be two votes eventually. One on the stormwater, one on the street. Um, could you guess if you have enough information to vote on either one of them tonight? Would the with I the would, fact that I you would don't have, have the Hong Kong's information, you don't have Beta's information, you don't have the no, Friday I, I, night. No, I, I don't believe we'll be voting tonight, if that's what you're asking. That was my only question. Okay. Thanks very much. Yep. Yep. Don't make a liar on me, everybody. <laughs> okay, we're ready for a vote. Does anybody else want to add to the outline in particular for the discussion points? Okay. All right. May I ask a question? Yes. Um, since if there's only five, is there a nine-member board here? There is a nine-member board here. So when there's only five members eligible to vote, what is the general? It's rule? a majority vote. As it tried. it depends on what kind of vote you need. So if you needed a, if you needed five members, you'd need everybody. I think that it's, it's still is it still it does have to be unanimous because it has to be a majority of the vote board anyway. So it's right. still so five. It's five. So it would be five zero. So all five of us. So uh, in order to make all the board members eligible to vote on this, wouldn't it be more practical to re-advertise the hearing so that we could have That's all of them? Certainly members? your choice. I yeah, think they have to reapply them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a process. Withdraw and resubmit. Withdraw and resubmit. Oh. Well, we'll, we'll consider that because that obviously, you know, would be 
from fear to us to have only a five member board. It, it, it's absolutely a fair consideration on your part to uh, think about. So in, on, in, a, in a situation of re, uh, resubmittal, would the board be waiving its application fees under those circumstances? So um, I'm not prepared to entertain that. You can always request that. Um, if you dis so if you reconsider, you, you want to withdraw and, and resubmit, we will certainly consider that request. Um, but I don't think that that's something we we're prepared to solve tonight. Okay. Well, I, I think that probably we would uh, reconsider uh, resubmitting and having all nine members eligible to. Yeah. It's a fair point. Um, the nine members happen to be available on the road for some. What? Is that was submitted more recently? Because huh? it was submitted more recently. Is that the roadway? Two separate. Yeah, so uh, in the notes. <clears throat> the stormwater piece is the five of us. Okay, the so roadway the, piece is the nine of us. So we just it's have to resubmit unusual. the stormwater uh, uh, application. Okay. Yes. Yeah, if just, you want it all nine. Okay. That's correct. Is it a chair? Yes. <coughs> I just want to follow up because I, I think I was correctly um, corrected. Correctly corrected. <laughs> on the, uh, my A&R statement, I just wanted to further elaborate on that. Um, it, because Buckland Street is a private way, it's not an A&R, right? If that was a public way, then this could be considered an A&R because they have frontage? Not this, no. Because the road doesn't exist. Oh, the road doesn't exist at all. So, so it needs, needs access. So why isn't this fall under our normal subdivision process or does it? I believe all that information was submitted yeah. to you early on. Uh, there was an analysis by town council okay. and a description of, of how so. we arrived here. Okay. We could go through it in the future. Okay. Yeah, just, I might have more questions as we go through the process of what's applicable and what's not. Mm -hmm. because it's a little tricky. Thank you. It, this is certainly a tricky one. Um, we have uh, 10 more minutes, so I'm going to um, invite the public to come forward with their concerns at this point or any feedback they want to give us at this point. Um, understanding that we will, be con uh, we will be continuing the hearing to another date, a future date and time. And there will be another opportunity for public. Oh, there will, there will be more opportunities, but there's an opportunity tonight if you have anything that you wanted to come forward and share with the board at this point. I have a question for clarification. Um, maybe part of it's historical. Um, it's a question in general through the chair. Uh, currently, I believe Buckland Street or Paper Street, Buckland Street, that's currently used as a driveway uh, for two homes. But that's not marked on these uh, on these plans. I don't know whose responsibility it is to to clarify that, but uh, I would like to see those marked on the pl on the plans. And uh, I'd like to see exactly how far along Buckland Street as a paper road <coughs> it has actually been paved historically at some point or another and how far along it is it's actually paved currently. Uh, and um, I should have probably dropped by and, and looked around myself late. I haven't done it lately. Um, but I believe one of the homes is, is built actually on Buckland Street. Uh, that's on Pleasant Street. Uh, and then Buckland Street was never continued, uh, so that's just kind of where it sits. And I'm hoping that any future development includes positive improvements for uh, both homes on the corner of Pleasant Street and the paper road, Buckland Street. Um, and then lastly, maybe my question is more for Mr. Terry. Uh, the actual Wall Street itself, there's no actual Wall Street, paper street or otherwise, it's the name of the property. Uh, I'm just kind of wondering uh, uh, if there's any historical significance to that that would be interesting or, I don't know, compelling. Is that showing the plans? No. no. It's in the detail. Just for the record, we do show the driveway and, uh, where it is located on the plan between the two houses. It serves as, it serves as the driveway for... Uh, uh, I believe it's 60, what number is that, 62? It doesn't say who it's for, it just says existing driveway. Right, right. what is that, what number is that? 62. 62. I think Street. Okay. So we do show that already on the plan. All right, thank you. Um, I, one thing that I didn't ask, does anybody have um, an interest in a site walk? I do as well. Yes. 
Um, maybe we could plan that in the, in the next uh, couple of weeks. I know I'm not available this coming Saturday, so if we could look at least to the, I don't know if it's the time. Is pick it, a date right now? Yeah, can we pick a date? Where are you going golf? Thank you, go on. 10th is good for me. Okay. So <laughs> Mm -hmm. I can do the as long as it's not raining. As long as it's not raining. We actually go all of our the sidewalks. Rain. I just want you to know. All we of our sidewalks are wet. We had a sidewalk <laughs> just this Saturday. In the rain. In What's the wrong rain. With rain. Yeah, what do you have against rain? In fact, we, we don't do sidewalks rain without rain. <laughs> do we? Maybe nuts. Okay. Um, is, would the 10th um, work for you? At say nine o'clock in the morning, the well, is that a is that Saturday? A Saturday? It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. Okay, we yeah, usually sure. do them Saturday mornings. Saturday, yeah. nine, 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 nine. How, did, how about the board? Saturday at ten on the tenth. Uh, Saturday at nine on the tenth. I'm sorry. I have, um, I have an obligation. Is you there do. is there any chance of I don't know how people feel about this, but earlier like eight a.m. We might be able to. I have a strong later. preference for eight a.m. Daylight savings time next week, so it'll be light out. <laughs> Little yeah. lighted. Um, I actually like eight eight eight. Eight. Is I don't mind eight. Eight. noon, but huh? is it possible to do it noon? Can noon? Afternoon? No. In the afternoon? No, you're saying no. I'm a later day kind of person too. It's harder for me too to be at later in the day. Oh, Are you I'll okay? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Deb. <laughs> can no, I'm going with that. I can do the later. So I can do the 17th. The 17th. Um, how's everybody on the 17th? Turkey Day. Good. You're you're out. Um. All right, so <coughs> the tenth or the seventh? How many people can do it? Are we just losing? We're j I'm sorry, just losing one person each day. Uh, not that that's not a <laughs> substantial <laughs> loss. So on the tenth, I can do morning, but not the afternoon because I have an okay. event to go to. So um, third, third, I can do. But you can't. I can't, but you guys can go out without me. My all oh, my kids out doing the site walk for that. Okay. I'm fine with that if I you guys want. Oh yeah, you can. I would like to know if it's okay if if we can just drop in when we can, seeing that it's a it's kind of difficult public to... paper. Well, it's not private. Public. It's not public. It's, it's private. It's well, that's pretty private. Pretty so I, I think that we're going to go for the tenth. Sorry, that's Deb. Okay. It's never going to work that we can get everybody. And I'm happy to do it at eight. Does eight work for everybody? Eight works for me. Okay. So um, just so the public knows, um, the public is invited. These are um, not uh, posted meetings. They are not um, public hearing meetings. So we, we are out there to see the site and um, understand it in general, but not talk about the specific um, matters that are before the meeting. But the public is invited to come along as well. All right, where should we meet? Today, please. <coughs> It is going to be November 10th, Saturday, November 10th at 8 a.m. And where we, where's a good place to meet? I think you should well, park on um, Maple, Maple or Leonard because you can't. Or Leonard? You can't park on Pleasant. Pleasant, Pleasant, <laughs> Street, Pleasant Street's a fairly busy roadway right. and a fairly good Nebraska. Oh, you mean right on the corner of the Paper Street at Pleasant, right? No. It's no, a terrible spot. That's not a good place to uh, yeah. park. Um, um, I say, I mean, or or the school property and walk down. I was going to say, yeah, park. The I would park in the middle school so, parking actually, lot. So I live, oh. I live on Maple, very close. Like, I think you should park on Maple Street. It's quiet. It's wild. The other Maple's side, quiet. yeah, the other side of Maple yeah. Street, uh, not Maple Street Extension, but Maple Street, the probably the closest off street. <laughs> so we'll meet on Maple Street. Yes. We'll park on Maple Street and meet there, yeah. like at the top. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. No, we're going to meet there, there so that we can walk across. And, and Maple oh, and Pleasant. Yeah. Maple and Pleasant. Yeah, that's what we'll meet. Coffee? Who's bringing the muffins? Muffins? Um, okay. Quick, quick, quick question. Yes, I don't please. Know if the attorney is representing a couple of your letters. Yes. Is he still here? Can we have a couple I of I think he left. He left because he okay. doesn't want to run up the clock. Um, I'm, I, I presume he'll be back. Um, may, may he'll be notified. Correct. What's that? He'll be notified of this. Uh, so I would, if it's part of the public minutes, we aren't, wouldn't necessarily specifically notify anybody except to say it out loud, but anybody who wanted to make sure people knew would let people know. One last question. Mm -hmm. On, when we resubmit for the um, 
stormwater management, um, can we waive the, since the board already has the plans, can we just waive that requirement? To submit waive the what requirement? The submittal of the plans since you already have them. Um, just uh, resubmit an application with a bother's list. <coughs> with if no they're way. identical, yeah, I, I think I, that we can, we can certainly talk about that. Okay. Um, all right, I'm sorry, I'm saving my Thank you. little date. Okay, so when is our, uh, so you are likely going to withdraw and do you want to withdraw and resubmit or do you want to think about it? No, no, we're probably, we're going to withdraw the stormwater and resubmit the stormwater, keep the uh, petition application going for the roadway since we already have all the eligible members. <coughs> and um, Rob's going golfing in the middle of the month, so it's probably continued until after Thanksgiving. Golfing in the middle of a month. Yeah. Nice. It's cold out here. <laughs> um, okay. Well, maybe the first week in December if the board is. So, uh, what is our schedule on December 3rd? What are Nothing. Nothing? So, um, I'll entertain. On the 19th, we have to vote on the 18C district to continue. So oh, to the 3rd. Right. Right, but that's coming for the third. Thank you for that. Um, okay. So um, what's the process for the applicant to withdraw at this point and then resubmit? Can they just... They we would, can, uh, administratively, we can, we can work on that. They would submit a letter to, to you and to the town clerk. Okay. And now, uh, we re-advertising, what would... Um, in order to... We need two weeks uh, advertising, right? So when, <coughs> when's the next deadline for advertising? That would have to... <laughs> Well, we can talk about we'll, it tomorrow. We can, we can talk okay. about it tomorrow. Yeah. So. All right. I mean, it's only so, one time in the paper, but that yeah. particular uh, ad has to right. be two weeks before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I know. They have the, the rules. All right. So um, I will entertain a motion then to continue this uh, public hearing, which is inclusive of the stormwater, because that actually will take, tomorrow, take place another time, mm -hmm. um, to December 3rd at 7.45. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstention? I just have a question that I probably should have asked before that. Um, do we need to do anything to um, send Fletcher and Tilton on to our attorney to have him review this as it pertains uh, I think to the streets? I think it's early to do that. I think we, we're going to have to talk about that at our next continued public hearing. My thought. I, I would assume we've continued, sooner actually. better. I've we've continued. That would have been great. All right. <laughs> that would have been great, but we have continued. Okay. So no more business on it. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, I will. Um, Obi, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Entertain a motion to open the continued public hearing on 55 Wilson Street, the secondary access road. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? <coughs> I may be called away during, so I'll step out. Like you asked me last time if I get a call on you, step out. Yeah, I, it's, I, it, it has been, uh, it's given me it's an open meeting law. Right, right, right. Um, so um, do you want to just leave now to me? Taking a chance, but I'm, I'll wait it out and see. Okay. Have you missed any of the hearings on this? Are you still I don't think so. Are you still eligible to vote? I presume. I might have missed one. Of them. I don't have. Everybody's still eligible to vote. Do you know, Kobe? This one I can hardly hear. Yeah, oh, Wilson Street. Okay. Wilson Street. Fifty-five Wilson Street. <coughs> There's a chance I may get called away. So. Okay. Uh, you miss one meeting on this one already. So you miss another one. Just so you know, if you are okay. called out, then you can, couldn't vote on it. Do we have the LNG expert with us tonight? Yes. yes, we do. <laughs> Pause to say congratulations to the new Papa. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. 
That's why he missed you the meeting. You don't look very tired at all. There was some business of a new <laughs> baby arriving. I guess that's a legitimate excuse. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, go ahead and open open it up for us if you want. Here, Tracy Adamski with Ty and Bond. Um, we're working with uh, Eversource Energy on the secondary access road for the existing LNG facility located off of Wilson Street. And I'm Jean Christie. I am project engineer with Ty and Bond. And we're here with uh, Jim Blackburn. And Jim Blackburn from Eversource Energy, uh, project manager of the LNG group. So I guess just as a quick recap, um, the secondary access road is being proposed to provide an alternative access for emergency vehicles, um, particularly at the request of the fire department so that there's a discrete uh, additional access route down to the tanks and to um, the new facility that's being proposed as part of a separate project. And um, I think the last time we were here, there was a couple of outstanding items that we were working through with beta, and those have been incorporated onto their, our plans and uh, provided to beta for their review. They included um, some additional details with respect to the proposed culvert, um, that's where the secondary access road crosses at the intermittent stream that runs parallel along Rafferty um, or Legacy Farm North Road as well as increasing the swales along the road to be able to provide for additional stormwater management and attenuation on the facility um, associated with the access road, as well as just some additional details uh, that were required for the construction. Okay, um, and we did take a site walk in the pouring rain. Do you want to give the rest of us a quick update on that? A quick update. Um, sure. Um, so the, um, the site walk, uh, we, it, it did help us to understand, those of us that were on the site walk, um, and we still have an open question that Mrs. Towner brought forward. Um, that particular um, piece of the stormwater management is not included in the access road project. So. Um, we just need to understand what is happening there and potentially we did ask that we could potentially look at improvements to that um, section while we were in there doing work even though it's not um, necessarily part of this stormwater management plan that was the big takeaway from me um, i don't know if anybody else had some big takeaways um, you know my, my takeaway is just a better understanding where that access road actually comes in mm -hmm. uh, you can see the double fencing and a sense of um, <coughs> security around that secondary and what the use of that secondary was going to be for and how certain navigates are on the outside of that. So, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of rubble and earth on the property that's gonna be um, crushed and used as fill for the, this project. So um, I, I understood a little bit better um, that we don't yet know how much will have to be brought in, but there's a substantial amount that has been pushed, pushed to the side for the construction over time of what has gone on in there. Thank you. Thank you. It was, you know, pretty much a walk through the woods in the rain. <laughs> Um, but we appreciated the opportunity. It was really, it's very helpful for me to see something um, big picture. So I, Actually, I appreciate just, it. Actually, just one thing to add. I think it, it did help to see just the amount of uh, regrading or fill that, that, that needed to be brought into. Um, hard to describe here, but you know, there are some pretty substantial um, grade changes on the site in order to accommodate the designs. So. What you three had just said um, kind of goes against the very first of the performance criteria from the um, uh, stormwater management permit uh, conditions. So number A is minimize total area of disturbance and protect natural features in the soil. And it seems like there's a lot. So I don't know that I would characterize what I said as being um, in opposition to that. I think that what we saw was uh, a lot of property that has been a lot of boulders and, and earth that has been previously disturbed okay. that will be utilized. 
um, as part of this project um, with the fill to hopefully minimize additional fill being brought in. Definitely correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're you're, you're okay. correct. Um, so I don't have the, um, it, I, I misspoke if I gave you that impression. So no, that's right. I probably should have framed my question a different way. But. Mm -hmm. Okay. This house pre-disturbed and it's already there. Yeah, there'll certainly be, I mean, there'll certainly be some disturbance, but there is an effort <clears throat> to work within previously disturbed <coughs> areas of the site. Um, and they're not card paths, but, but, but existing. Right, there's some, some existing access roads yeah. there. I think that might have been used for when some of that rubble was placed there and is, is still in use. Mm -hmm. And I guess for this project that's in front of you right now for the secondary <coughs> access road, there really is only a small portion of it that's, that's new road that comes in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, off of Rafferty Legacy Farm North up along uh, near the impoundment area. But that then connects to the existing access road that runs along the tanks. And that was a, a definite design uh, decision made so that we didn't further encroach into the forested land that abuts that area. Thank you. And thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so I know our representative from Beta is here. If I can. So um, I, I don't, from my understanding, there aren't a lot of existing open issues or? No, um, there are only a couple of issues. Uh, one, which Ty and Bond mentioned, um, we made some suggestions towards the end of last week for uh, the details, one of them specifically being um, some engineering suggestions for the stone check dam um, along the new access road, um, just to kind of better control flow and infiltration. Um, and then we just had the two conditions that we recommended, one to specify the gravel with the minimal fines and the other um, for the draft of the SWIP prior to construction. And that was it. Okay, thank you. Um, did we put those in this, the draft conditions? They are. Yeah, yes. yeah, thank you. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, any questions from the board? I had a question. Um, yeah, go ahead, Amy. I believe outstanding from last time, we were wondering about um, the foam that they use to put out um, when, when they're doing tests at, so yeah. and putting out a fire. Right. Is that what it was? And was it toxic or not? And where does it go? Yes. Is that, is that the question? <laughs> uh, so there is the, an open question. That actually, part of what we understood, and the fire chief is here, and I appreciate that. Um, Part of what we understand is that that particular drain, drainage uh, piece is not actually on any of the ones that we're discussing, okay. but I definitely have that as an open issue to hopefully be able to um, improve. Um, but the foam is no longer being used, is that right, when we? I'm gonna turn to Jim here. Yeah. Okay. So, so the foam would still be used in the case of some incident at the facility. However, the foam is not used for testing purposes in the manner that I think was previously described, which is, um, I think, back prior to around 2015 or 14, they stopped annual testing of the foam system where they would, they would use the, the full amount of the foam. So at this point, they, they use just enough to ensure that it does produce foam, and then I believe that's even currently vacuum trucked out now. So they don't even leave that as it, prior, as it was prior, where I think it was having issues with that flowing across the, the roadway. So then to Amy's question, there was a, you can go ahead and come up here, Jim, uh, was the question about do we know what the material is and, and the relative toxicity and so forth? I mean, how is that managed? Or So it's a Ansel foam product, which we did, um, pr we do have the MSDS sheet for it which I think was one of the, the questions that had come up a couple weeks ago. Um, and we can certainly provide that. The, the, the issue is the MSDS sheet is specific to the concentrate liquid form of the foam. So I don't know how much information that, that actually provides because it's not the, the concentrate necessarily that you would, you would see at that outfall. Um, so would it be appropriate to add to the conditions or maybe it's not relevant that the, if the foam is used in testing that it is vacuumed up and taken off site or is that out well, of the it's not used in testing is that what we're understanding it it, it is to a very small extent compared to 
the condition where we would fill the entire containment with foam. Now it's just enough. It's, I think it's actually now local to actually the pumps, which are up by the tanks themselves. So you don't get the spray of foam that fills that entire area anymore. So we're talking a very limited footprint compared yeah. to about hundreds of feet before. So I'm really happy to know that. I just didn't know if we need to specify it, that that's the procedure. I, think, I, I definitely think that that's in play. Yeah. Just to follow up on that, yeah. Mayor and Madam Chair, when you say limited footprint, are we talking like <coughs> So I think we're talking, we're going from filling previously where it was uh, a lot of foam was used or the whole, I think there's 500 gallons of concentrate storage where they would use the, a big portion of that, if not most of it, and, and, and use that and fill the containment, which as you saw was several hundred feet by several hundred feet. We're talking probably down to an area now the size of this room at most, just to ensure that it produces foam and then that's it. For clarity, I'm, I'm not sure if I heard that the foam which is still being used, its toxic, toxicity is <coughs> what? I, we believe it is not toxic. Um, but again, when we reference the MSDS sheet as a concentrate, it certainly could be. Um, on the diluted, I think it's like a two and a half percent foam. So, so much um, this expands and fills the room in this area. Uh, That's right. Square footage or something like that. Um, we were unable to attain any information from Ansel. I suspect there may be something out there. However, when we contacted him, and quite honestly, I think it was about a week ago, we weren't able to get much feedback from him on that. And then just to make sure we're touching bases, the chief has this information now? Or you provided it to us and we haven't shared it with the chief yet? I don't have the specific information. Right. So. We certainly can provide it to whether it's the board or the, the chief to, to review. It, it is, I mean, one thing we did find is it is a product that's used in the marine industry also. Sure. So, I just want to make sure what that, that tells me, I'm not, sh I'm not sure, but it is used in applications that are beside other water resources and such. We're through the chair, I just want to make sure that we're touching bases with all our town departments on this because it's uh, an important question by us, by the citizens and uh, a question that should be answered is if, even if it's not a direct part of this project, it's, it's, it's an important part of the, of the, of the yeah. process. We can provide that. Um, Mrs. Town, you had a question or you have a comment? Yeah, I do. Yeah, come on forward. <coughs> Katie Towner, 9 Kruger Road. So um, we were told that, that the people who understood these chemicals were going to be present tonight at this hearing, and we're going to answer the question. And the question has not been answered. I mean, I know the chemical names of the toxic chemicals. <laughs> and I think somebody from the LNG ought to, I'm sure they know the name of the toxic chemicals. So, you know, the pertinent question is, did they use the perfluoroalkalines dangerous chemicals in this foam and, and shoot it out the, the outfall? It sounds like they did. It sounds to me that's what they're saying they did. And that's their continuing practice. So, um, you know, they, they need to send their expert and own up to what, you know. I mean, everybody has to have an, a safety sheet for all the chemicals they use at every company. We all work at companies and we all use those sheets. And, you know, to claim that they don't know what's in the chemicals, that they're, that they're sending through their outfalls, I think is, is very disingenuous. And I don't think <coughs> that anything should be approved or until they answer these questions. And I think they should have records for, for how much, how many times they did this, you know, they say once a year. Um, what I've read is they're, they're supposed to test these systems twice a year, but whether it's once a year or twice a year, 
they ought to have records of all the dates they did it, and they ought to know what they put in the stream. And yes. May I ask a question of Ms. Towner? Yes. Oh. Ms. Towner, you had provided some photos uh, of the phone uh, that you observed. Is that correct? That's correct. When were those photos taken? Um, I don't think that's the pertinent question. I think the pertinent question is the records, is, is them saying what they did, when they did it, how many times they did it. They're required to keep records on all of these things. And just the fact that, that I saw it is um, kind of um, what, anecdotal or um, not. I mean, I saw it and I took pictures. You know, you can take that for what it's worth. But, um, you know, the, what is pertinent is that they identify, you know, th that they go on record. If they want to say they never used these chemicals or they, you know, last time they used them was such and such a date, the main thing is for them to go on the record to say what they did and when they did it, and then, you know, <laughs> I think that would be the appropriate time, you know, if, if you know, I mean. If I may, through the chair, just to second uh, Mr. DeYoung's question, it would be helpful to us just to kind of understand the time frame of what we're talking about. Um, and yes, the reports about testing are probably on file with the state, uh, or if they're not, maybe now's the time we find that out. But. Um, I think specifically it would be helpful to us if, if you just remember, is it last year, the year before, um, this year? I, I don't sit there and observe the stream, you know, 24 seven. Okay, so uh, I we, mean, we've asked the question. There's we been, would, the, uh, the fact Tanner, of when Mrs. I saw Tanner, it is not Mrs. Tanner, pertinent. Please. If you're not willing to answer the question, that's fine. We're, we're, we're good. You know, they, they did this once a year for up until a couple of years ago. Okay. When I happened to see it, I think is When is the irrelevant. last time you observed it? A couple of years ago? I, I would rather that they... Okay. I'd be willing to okay. answer the question, but I'd rather that they, that they, you know, line up the dates and then I can say, oh yeah, that's when I saw it. But I think, I, I don't think it's up to me to we understand you know. what you think. Thank you. Right. Okay. Through the chair, can I ask a question to Mr. Blackburn? Um, of course. And he had mentioned Jim, yeah. you, you had mentioned that, that you're that you think that you now evacuate the phone after the testing. I'm just wondering if you can What's next time you process? come back if you can just confirm that. Absolutely. Because to, to me that's that's the big difference here is is whether that's just continuing to get washed down or if it is actually being evacuated then um, to me that, that for me, that addresses my, my, my specific concerns about the phone. I, I, we can confirm that. And again, my, my feedback to the board on that is based on conversations with the plant manager who's been there now, I think, 15 years or so. And, and he's very specifically said that they have stopped using the large quantity of foam that they had used previously for testing um, about three to four years ago. So that would put us back to 14, 15. Um, <coughs> one, other things. So specifically, they did identify to us what the product was, which is Ansel Jet X two and three quarter percent uh, foam concentrate. So, as I said, we did identify and we have the MSDS sheet, which we can certainly produce. Now, Tracy was able to just um, identify on it specifically to environmental effects. Um, sorry, to exotoxicity. Um, specifically, it does identify this material is not expected to be harmful to aquatic life. Um, again, this is in the concentrate form, so once we produce a foam from it, you know, we're, we're taking it from a 100% from a concentration down to two and three quarter. Um, and we can try to dig to, to produce some more information on that, but I think um, it's our expectation that it isn't an environmental hazard. When, when produced in its foam. So, so through the chair, if you could just confirm um, the date that you made that process change mm -hmm. so that you're no longer testing the full, the full load. And then secondly, if you can confirm at what point you started to evacuate that foam instead of washing it down. I think sure. that would be very helpful for us. But, so. 
Um, I, I'd need to know uh, how you test your the efficacy of that evacuation system, so that you, how do you know what it, that it is not going downstream to any extent? Um, if personally, I, I need the information on what is going off-site there. Um, it's not just aquatic life, it goes directly downstream to a drinking water supply. Um, and I think that in the interest of, you know, doing our due diligence, we need to understand that better. Um, for me, I need to understand, um, there's a, dire a direct wash off a very, a, a, an industrial complex straight down um, into the stream and into the, the reservoir. So I, I would like to know what, what containment measures are in place um, on your property for what's coming off of that, that, that site. Actually, for the chair, if you actually have a typed or written procedure for how you do the testing, sure. um, that would be helpful, I think, to us. Yes. Just a sorry, from a request at you guys, but what Ms. Towner was saying, would it be possible just to get the dates of, within the last five years of when you tested? We can try to produce at a minimum at a minimum an estimate of when they were. If he's we, been there fifteen to twenty. Fifteen to twenty years. I don't I don't think, think I'll be able to produce that far I, back. I think that that's I a lot. I'm I'm comfortable with these companies keep doesn't hurt to ask. So, so Deb, I know. Let's start with five years if, if everybody's yeah, if we have to go if, if, if you know I but I would say I I would I would request as you know, far back as you can possibly. Sure. So the other part of the request was the dates would be great, but if you could add the amount of chemicals used, that would be perfect for us. But just be a little audit trail so we can feel comfortable that here's when it's happening. Thank you. Um, anybody else on this issue in particular? That's what we yeah. to do. Uh, I, I guess um, <coughs> just a, a question or a clarification. Today the hearing is for the secondary access road and I'm wondering if we can separate out the secondary access road so that we can start moving forward on that project and getting the access road up and running as, as soon as possible for emergency access and then we can address all of these at the next hearing for the facility. I guess, please keep in mind, the access road and the stormwater produced, I guess, from that area of the facility is, is not part of any of the drainage related to, to what we're talking about. What we're talking about is really related to the facility upgrades that we're doing, and, and that would be the only place where that would come into All right, to impact. So um, what I want to avoid, I'll just be candid with you from my perspective, I want to avoid um, acting on the road and then getting to the facility and having you folks tell me that that doesn't necessarily pertain to that piece of drainage because we're only working on stormwater for this additional piece of the facility and we're, we're actually questioning the existing facility that you have in the stormwater that's coming off. So how do we, how, how do we ensure that we capture this conversation? It's a, it's a little tricky. Um, I support your statement, what you, what you just said, and your view on it. Uh, historically, this board has also dealt with Aerosource as one company for electrical <coughs> situations we have in town as well as for gas situations. No matter what the issue there in front of us, it, it's one company, one view. There's two projects, but it's one company. So I have, I have no problem asking these questions now. No, and, and I think it's good for us to know what these questions are so that we can be better prepared to <clears throat> have a good discussion, a more thorough discussion on this on, on the 19th. It is fair to say that we expect a little more detail on this tonight, on the actual foam and the, and the, the toxic, toxicity levels in the process. Um, it's, I'm one member of the board, so I'll, I'll put it out to the board. Um, but I do want to um, at least have some agreement that um, 
because we are working on that site and because we are talking about stormwater and because we have identified an area of concern that there is going to be a collegial process where we actually can address that, that piece of stormwater that is concerning to us and the neighbors downstream. Um, just one comment and then actually a question for, for Elaine. Um, I mean, I think sort of think of this as like, a, you know, if I'm doing a, an addition on my house um, and then I have to bring all my smoke detectors up to the current standard. Um, so even though my addition may not affect the other <coughs> bedrooms and whatever else, um, because it's being updated or upgraded in some capacity, I think there's an, it's an obvious <coughs> opportunity to address some other potential shortcomings on the site. Uh, that's just, just my opinion. I'm not sure what applies here. That leads to my second question. My question to Elaine, I'm curious if you have any guidance here for us on this because of the fact that the, the, storm, the, 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 the water runoff issue in question is really not part of this, this access road that we're evaluating. So I'm just curious if you can provide some guidance to us. So it's my understanding that this is one of three applications before you, and so you still have um, another stormwater management permit application and an earth removal permit application. So even if you dispensed with one tonight, you still have two additional applications before you that are coming at a future meeting. So the opportunity to discuss this doesn't doesn't go away. Okay, but I guess my question though is that, is that given that that this potential foam runoff issue is not related at all to, I think, any of those three other applications. Well, I, I didn't attend the first hearing where the, the initial foam was discussed, but from what I gathered at the last meeting and tonight is that there's a testing procedure that occurs, uh, that occurs within this impoundment area, and the impoundment area is not hydrologically connected to the land outside it. And so for, in order for it to go beyond it, it would have to either be washed out or pumped out and I think what they're saying now is they have a procedure where they remove it instead of what they used to do was dumping it into the stream. So that's, I think, what I've heard, that unless something occurs to the foam in the impoundment area, it stays there. Right? Is that a true statement? Or does it ever go beyond the impoundment area? Is there a way for it to go out by itself? Based on the current practice, I would say, no, and it should not. Um, and, I, and I think we can certainly confirm that and uh, either produce or uh, amend existing operating procedures of the facility to, to kind of ensure that that is the practice going forward and it's not something that we, we do today in the last three years and then all of a sudden next year we start just doing it again. Um, so I think we can, you know, there's a number of things we could probably do such as that. Um, uh, but. But again, that, I guess, hydraulically is connected to the liquefier portion of the project and not the access road. So I guess we're just looking to, to, to try to maintain that there is two separate projects in front of you. And, and we certainly can address that. And, and you know, going away from this meeting, we, we certainly will, will start that process and product, try to produce some better answers for you. But just we hope that you at least recognize that it is two separate projects and, and one is the liquefier project and that probably does tie to the outfall um, and whether or not we have an obligation to, to change that or not I don't know but we certainly will work with you to, to, to produce the procedures and that stuff I, I don't think we would challenge that we, we have no issue doing that I think that's fine um, but it is separate from the access road um, just from my my perspective um, is that you can you can disapprove the stormwater permit if you don't feel that it's protecting your water resources, and I think based on that, I would be comfortable going ahead with the access road and just talking about the access road at this point. I'm very concerned about the fall. Don't misunderstand me. It, it concerns me greatly that it potentially is going into our water supply, um, but I would be comfortable discussing it later. So, <coughs> just for clarity, my take. Uh, there's stormwater permits for both pieces. So we are talking about a stormwater permit for the access road, and you're still comfortable going forward with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, I guess my point would be a question to Elaine, and um, which was um, on um, Gary's question was, at what point of construction, if we're doing a 50% of a renovation of a plant, 
do they need to bring everything up to current standards? Um, I mean, I, I want to say though that I, I do think we need to get back to just the um, aspect that they came here before us. But I do. But my question <coughs> that we need to do some research on is what percentage of their plant. So if they're doing a 50 percent, do they need to upgrade the um, other stormwater drain, which hasn't been upgraded since they installed the plant initially? We saw some sign of of aging. Um, there is what's been, been developed as a wetland along the culvert on the on that side is north side northwest so the south side of, of it's, it's legacy south. farms north yeah it's the north si north, it's the north side, side of the plant north, north, north side, side of the plant, plant yes so we observe sitting water um, which may be considered a wetland at this point but that drainage was definitely contributing the water we were in there in the rain it was a perfect day for to really watch it and so there is a consider a considerable <laughs> amount of water being held in that area on that one culvert. I can't say that it is um, that in that area that's on at that specific corner that it's flowing into the stream, but I think that there is enough <coughs> that it would warrant a, a renovation. So I guess my question for a future conversation would be at what percentage do we start to look at some of the other things that may affect the long term use and long term health of that street and that roadway? and vis-a-vis -vis the stream. Mm -hmm. So that would be my question for us to do a little homework on. Mm -hmm. I think we should just kind of struggle if anybody's kind of objective. I, I, I think, I think that's what we're doing. They're willing, to, they're willing to work with us. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. Myself, maybe I don't have any objection to finding out how successful we might be yeah. for them. I just don't want to keep repeating over and over. We could be, um, you know, better spent our time for talking about the road. I don't think so far. I don't think we're repeating. But thank you. Anybody, Brian? Uh, I, I'm similar to Carol. Right? I'm okay looking at the roadway in a separate. We're all in agreement here that the uh, stormwater runoff from and the foam discharge needs to be addressed. I think. At the next meeting, they're going to come back and hopefully with some additional data and that will help with illuminate this issue in a broader context. But I'm okay doing it separately with the uh, access road. All right. Um, are people comfortable moving forward with the access road discussion tonight just show, by show of hands? Okay. Um, I would feel better if we had some agreement that we are going to. Um, I have a collegial, uh, full conversation about that runoff when we are talking about the um, the other piece of the storm, the other stormwater permit. Absolutely, we can ensure that we've got uh, we're better prepared for that conversation for the next next meeting. And yeah, I would um, appreciate that. Just a quick comment. I don't think it's yeah. any different than Legacy Farm North with Roy. Right, we we focused on the project and we knew we were going to come back and address the. Uh, so for me, just to be clear, we've got two pieces of stormwater, two pieces, you know, two pieces of the property that are right next to the, you know, they're, it's all stormwater, it's all one big complex. So I, I'm, in this case, I'm saying that I'm comfortable looking at the road, but um, it is not, you know, so separate to me, mm -hmm. this grander concept of stormwater and stormwater management. Um, and ensuring the safety of the of the runoff off-site. So, Katie, one last comment before we yeah. <coughs> Katie Tanner, Nine Kruger Road. So my comment has to do with this so-called dual use of this huge containment basin. So the, what, what I'm hearing is they're saying they can, they can use this containment basement, basin for chemical experiments. They can, they can fill it with chemicals, and then um, they, can, they say they have a written procedure um, to, cleanse, <coughs> to cleanse the chemically laden basin. And then, poof, it's stormwater, right? It's not stormwater, okay? You can't, I don't, I'll do some research on this, but I don't think there, that you can, you can use the same 
you know, container to, to mix chemicals and then, and, and then say, oh, today I'm going to use it for a laboratory. Tomorrow, it's, it's just stormwater. So I think, I think it's not stormwater. I think those and, are fair questions. Yeah. And I think that, that um, what we've identified here is a discharge of non-stormwater into a stormwater outfall. And I think that it's well within what you're considering here to say that is not stormwater, okay? Um, you know, I mean, <coughs> I, I would think that the effort they would have to go through to prove that they've cleansed, I mean, you saw it, it's huge. I mean, how could they possibly clean this basin? I understand you know? your question. So, you know, I think that what you've identified is non storm water discharge and, and <coughs> should be a condition that, that um, they do not, that they cease and desist any discharge from that basin. They have to find some other way to, to uh, or, or, you know, I mean, they could put a, a, a cleanup device on it. There's, there's no reason that they should be using this huge, acreage of chemical <clears throat> chemically uh, you know there's residue there's residue from these chemicals you know and yeah there, there's no reason that they should be pumping this out <coughs> two weeks ago their representative sat here and said oh yeah we just pump it right out we pump it right out into the stream after we so we you agree know. with you that we're going to we're going to ask these questions um, on the next yeah. piece of it but it's it's you know it's well within what we're talking about here and the other thing is that this testing that they do uh, of the fire systems it's mandated federally right okay there are records there right. are records from the first time they did it it's right. a federal agency I agree. they don't do this because they because they think it's a good idea. They do it because they are mandated to do it. And, you know, you can Google, you know, you can, you know, the, the records are there and, and I would say they should, they should submit all the records because there's no reason not to. And, um, you know, I mean, if they've been putting these chemicals into my drinking water for the last 35 years that I've lived there, you know, I think, I think I ought to know, you know? The okay. Katie, I appreciate it. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes. I'm, I'm not comfortable voting on this tonight. I think we've asked them for more information, which they are <coughs> uh, willing to, to provide. Uh, I, I've known Jim. Uh, he's been in front of our board for a number of years, and he's always been professional and um, accurate in, in the information that they present. Uh, I would just like to ask that we not vote on this until we do have the further information uh, to move forward on. Um, Bring it back to the poll. I'm just saying that it, we're talking about stormwater management and I would just like to have the further information that we've requested and uh, they're willing to provide it so why not get the information that we've asked for. Amy. I had a thought and I don't know if it would help would be helpful would, would there be a way we could add a condition to solve this like we have condition 1e is divert uncontaminated water around disturbed areas could we add to that something about any cont contaminated water will be di disposed of according to state regulations or something i don't know if there's a wording that we, that we could add that would allow us to move forward yeah i am um I'm not sure we have the information we need to know what we need okay. to do there, but I think that that's an excellent suggestion. I think that it is fair that um, as we're talking about um, stormwater, we consider thoughtfully that um, the way the site is used, do we do that, for example, on gas stations and so forth, we did that. Um, I don't know how people are feeling. Can you put a condition referencing a condition to the next stormwater permit? About that sort of... The liquefier project? Yes. Yes. Okay. It sounds like there's more of a connection there, rather than to the access road. 
So what were you, were you asking? Can we do well, research? Well, in reference to Amy's wanting to put a condition that any discharge that, yeah. you know, gets dealt with in this manner, and we don't know what this manner is, I'm suggesting that it goes you put a condition that references the stormwater permit from the liquefier project. If I'm understanding you right, you want to, con you want to connect this stormwater permit to yes. that stormwater permit. Is that doable? I, what I understood your answer to be was that that idea could go in the next stormwater permit for the liquefier project. Based on what the applicant indicated, there's more of a connection hydrologically between that area and the liquefier. So to Carol's question, linking the two stormwater permits would not be something we would typically do. Linking both permits together? Yeah, putting some permit? sort of condition here, I'm not exactly sure what you're suggesting to that next one. Well, I was, I was trying to address Amy's concern. Yeah. I personally am comfortable with addressing it in the next stormwater permit. As am I. I, I am too, and Madam Chair, if I may. Mm -hmm. We're talking about this stormwater for the secondary access road only. The secondary access road only is a, is a road, the road <coughs> that you're going to be building is about what, a couple hundred feet from that area out on the Rafferty. So I'm just, we're getting caught up in a lot of things here. But if I remember correctly, through the existing road, on the access road that goes around the circumference, we're essentially jettisoning from there at an angle back out to Rafferty. Correct? That's but, correct. That's I mean, we're essentially, this is the new portion of it, and then it ties in and um, to the existing access road that comes around the tanks. Correct. So, so that access road will be modified a little bit, but within the existing footprint of the disturbed area. But, but the stormwater that we were discussing that outflows from here is, there's a, there's a uh, this containment, right, which is a, a, a stone, wall, berm. I would believe that berm completely segregates the stormwater related to the rest of the facility and project from the stormwater related to the roadway, which is just this strip right here. Correct. And, and so and I'm not sure I how to tie them together, but certainly I'm more than happy to further conversation and, and do what we can that's reasonable over here to, to mitigate your concerns. But, I, I do strongly feel that this, this road is, is very much a different project and has different <coughs> stormwater, uh, I guess, potential impacts. Yeah. That's what I think all yeah. we're asking to be considered. Yeah. And I just wanted to kind of provide that sense of scope, what we're focused on here, is having gone on the sidewalk and get a better understanding of it. The things upstream that we saw, and I appreciate you pointing out, those are the big concerns with the phone and whatnot. Um, they're going to be addressed, but I think for this, it's strictly regarding the runoff on the access road. Okay. But that chart shows the other side of the, of the coin is that it's also closest to the stream that feeds into the, the um, no, state park. No, that's it's not actually. That's, that's Rafferty Road, Legacy Park North. Uh, but, but the stream that you're discussing, I think, is. <coughs> It's above, it's at higher yeah, grade. Yeah, we actually, it, it was. It's the closest it's, yeah, to that stream. It's, it's really not connected. Um, we, we observed that it, there is pooling of the wetlands in that area that could potentially be from that stormwater system from the larger basin. But the road itself is very well designed. Um, as it, I guess one of the things I learned um, by, by um, absorbing where these culverts are, is that they really are um, extending merely for the road's purpose and, and, and trying to get the, the water drainage away um, from that, and it's not affecting the wetlands on this side of the site. So I think all, for all purposes, they're really not tied in. The culverts so. feed the other side of Rafferty I'm, I'm actually going to go downhill, we, which is west. We have to do Zach tonight, <clears throat> so we are going to wrap this up, however it goes. Um, and and uh, I'll entertain the motion. I'm going to read the draft conditions. <clears throat> I appreciate your point, though. <coughs> uh, <clears throat> 
the draft conditions for 55 Wilson Street Secondary Access Road. Um, all erosion and sediment control shall comply with the following performance criteria. <clears throat> minimize total area of disturbance and protect natural features and soil. Sequence activities to minimize simultaneous areas of disturbance, mass clearings, and grading of the entire site shall be avoided. Minimize peak, runoff, peak rate of runoff in accordance with stormwater standards. Minimize soil erosion and control sedimentation during construction. Uh, divert <coughs> uncontaminated water around disturbed areas. Maximize groundwater recharge. Install and maintain all erosion and sediment control measures in accordance with the manufacturer's specifications and good engineering practices. Prevent off-site transport of sediment. Protect and manage on and off-site material storage areas, um, overburden and stockpiles of dirt, borrow areas, and other areas used solely by the permanent project are considered a part of the project. Comply with applicable federal <coughs> The state and local laws and regulations, including waste disposal, sanitary sewer and septic system regulations, and air quality requirements, including dust control. <coughs> Prevent significant alteration of habitats mapped by the Mass Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program. <coughs> Institute interim and permanent stabilization measures, which shall be instituted <coughs> on the disturbed area as soon as practical, but no more than 14 days after construction activity has temporarily or permanently ceased on that portion of the site. Um, I'm not reading them verbatim. <clears throat> Properly manage on-site construction of waste materials, prevent off-site vehicle tracking of sediments, dust control, divert off-site runoff from highly erodible soils and steep slopes to stable areas. Two, the project shall comply with the following erosion and sediment control requirements. <clears throat> Prior to land disturbances, activities commencing on the site, the developer shall physically mark limits of no land disturbance on site with tape sign or orange construction fence. Appropriate erosion and sediment control measures shall be installed prior to soil disturbance. Measures shall be taken to control erosion. Sediment shall be removed once the volume reaches one quarter to one half the height of the hay bale. <clears throat> um, sediment shall be removed from silt fence prior to reaching the load bearing capacity of the fence. Sediment from sediment traps or sedimentation ponds shall be removed when design capacity has been reduced by 50%. Soil stockpiles must be stabilized or covered at the end of each workday. <coughs> Disturbed areas remain, uh, remaining idle for more than 14 days shall be stabilized with seating, etc. For active construction areas such as borrow or stockpile areas, roadway improvements in areas within 50 feet of a building under construction, a perimeter sediment control system shall be installed and maintained. <clears throat> a tracking pad or other approved stabilization method shall be constructed at all entrance or exit points of the site to reduce the amount of soil carried onto the roadway and off-site. Permanent seeding shall be undertaken in the spring from March through May and in late summer, early fall from August to October 15th. <coughs> all slopes steeper than 3 to 1 as well as perimeter dikes, sediment basins, or traps and embankments must, upon completion, be immediately stabilized. Temporary sediment trapping devices must not be removed until permanent stabilization is established in all contri contributor contributory drainage areas. All temporary erosion and sediment control measures shall be removed after final site stabilization. <clears throat> a minimum of seven days prior to the start of construction, a detailed construction sequence shall be submitted to the principal planner by the site contractor for review and approval. A copy of the Sign Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan shall be provided to the board prior to construction. All required SWPPP stormwater construction site inspection reports shall be submitted to the principal planner within 14 days of each inspection. An adequate stockpile of erosion control materials shall be on site at all times for the emergency or routine replacement. It shall include materials for repair or replace silt uh, fences, hay bales, etc. <coughs> The disturbed area shall be temporarily stabilized by hydro seeding if construction of the secondary access road is not commenced within 30 days of lot clearing. Excavation of the site stormwater swales must be observed by the board's engineer prior to laying loam and seed. Top course materials and gravel sizing for the access road shall be big long list of letters. Um, any, anybody have anything else to add? Yes. Did you know from the project today that we no longer need number nine because it's on now. Oh, all right. The one I just read with the big long list of letters we no longer need. 
Um, anybody have any other additions or questions? I do. It may yeah. be appropriate. I, I think it is appropriate for this section. Uh, maybe it would come to the new number nine. Uh, a motion that this, we add the secondary access road shall only be used by emergency vehicles. I think it is intended only to be used for emergency vehicles. Is that correct? Yeah. Do you that is correct. I don't know if I'd want to agree to make that necessarily a condition. I mean, that is the abs that is the intention of it, and, and but I don't want to necessarily restrict it if there's other uses, That's whether they're once or twice in the a year. Um, You're using it for okay. construction vehicles too, aren't you? We would in the beginning of the construction project. I mean, we have the option in what the year existing intention is to use the Wilson Street entrance, but it's <coughs> for a lot of benefit to minimizing some of the uh, traffic on Wilson Street. And uh, so uh, its primary purpose is for, for emergency vehicle access. We don't have an intention. We certainly won't be using it for LNG trucking or anything like that. But as we had discussed, I, I suppose there could be times throughout the life of the facility where it would make more sense to use that. So I am a little sensitive to restricting it to I just have a question for Fran on that. I mean, what are you what's the objective of that or what are you concerned about? Uh, security and um, if there's never any traffic on it unless there's an emergency uh, it would make me feel a bit better about stormwater management of, of this spe specific project um, <coughs> but there's nowhere that I've seen in this project in our uh, agreement here that expressly says it's an emer only an emergency access road and there's been a concern shared uh, by someone here that uh, made me think about it and, and um, I'd like us to add this condition in. Uh, it is an emergency access road uh, and uh, <coughs> period as far as I'm, I'm concerned. But uh Oh. Anybody else have any thoughts on that? Well, I think Hold on. I'm just taking a look. Okay. <laughs> um, but I think what was more aptly described to you during our tour was the gating situation. And I think that there that if you went over that right now and told you told them what you told me about that access, I think that would might help alleviate some of the concerns. Can you Go over that again. Yeah. So, so the gate. Do you have any pictures of that gate? So we have two minutes. Okay. It, it, it would have the same security access as the existing Wilson Street gate, um, including cameras and all the other things that we employ. Okay. Um, vehicles accessing through the gate are always met with a guard. And so even down in that area of the facility, we would also employ that down there. Um, yeah, but you're missing one thing. It was the level of access. Um, remember, that's the second gate. That's it's right. It's the second so gate closest have, to Rafferty. <coughs> so there are multiple gates. There's, there's both the outer perimeter security fence, which is what you see. There's also an inner security fence, and there's also an anti-vehicle gate. So there's, there's multiple layers of protection over there, and any vehicles coming in and out would be screened. Even if that's a secondary access that's not used as the primary, we screen the same way as, as the primary access. So I'm going to make the point that we are considering an emergency access road stormwater permit for me. That's a hard, I, I would have almost thought that that condition doesn't have to be in there, but now I'm feeling like I want it in there because that's the project we were considering. But that's my, my perspective. We did not consider it as a, a secondary road for use of the facility. We didn't talk about other truck traffic. We talked in terms of emergency vehicles uh, on the occasion that emergency vehicles are needed on the site. That's, what, that's the scope of what I was considering. <clears throat> if I can interject, that's not what they were presenting. What they're presenting is actually the reason they're building it first is so they can build the facility. Oh, using that to for construction, in. for construction. But after it's constructed, mm -hmm. it's it's an emergency access. Could we change the way you condition it so that it's not? Uh, I'm not opposed to limiting the use of it because again, we don't intend on using it. Is there a way to limit it without strictly without it being as strict as there'll be no use other than emergency vehicles, <coughs> so that 
if there is a, an occasional need to use that. I just, I'm very sensitive to the idea of a, a strict limitation. Could you say primarily, primarily? used as an emergency access? If I could respond to that around Actually, the corner. Actually, I would really like to hear other voices other than mine, and just because sure. I want to, in the interest of time, I want to see how people are feeling about this. I don't really see the need to add the condition. I, I mean, I think it's actually better that they access it via Rafferty, Lakes Farms North, and on Wilson Street, which is more residential. So, and I. That's not what we considered in this hearing, though, okay. from, from my perspective. I don't, I don't feel the need oh. for the condition. <coughs> to say. Yep. I'm kind of with Amy. I mean, they have security there. Um, if you never use a road, you're not even sure you're going to get able to get by with an emergency vehicle. So it would be nice to use it once in a while. I, I'm with Amy and David. I think the facility leans itself to using Wilson Street, and it's not going to be a used road unless it needs to be for some purpose. So I'm not in favor of the condition. I'm not in favor of the condition. Um, I believe that the, um, as it has been presented, the nature of it being a gravel road limits the usage to a certain extent already. Um, it, is, it is being built as a kind of a, well, secondary access road. It's, it's an ancillary. It's like a, a gravel road with limited um, width. <coughs> And so that in itself, I believe, already imposes a condition on what they can use it for. So I'm a no without the condition, just so you know. Yes. Sorry, you're a no without I'm a no. Without it. Without it, because if it's not in the conditions, it's, it doesn't exist. And they can use the road for anything they choose to use it for. Yes. Katie Towner, 9 Kruger Road. Um, my, my concern is, is the security. Now, with, with, uh, with the fire department using the road, obviously those people are vetted, you know, you know who they are. Um, if you're going to be using it for um, construction vehicle traffic, um, you know, there, there's no vetting of those people. I mean, you can, you can um, talk into a squawk box or look at them over a surveillance camera. But um, I believe that for the LNG trucks that come into there, those drivers are extremely vetted. And you know, there's databases. And they know who those people are. And they know who's coming in. Um, I don't think you should be allowing unknown drivers of construction <laughs> trucks or, or people posing as drivers of construction trucks to be entering an LNG facility. Okay. You know, there could be anything in that truck. Uh -uh. You know, could be could be a terrorism act. You know? I, I, I get it. I get it, Katie, and I don't disagree. But in the no, interest of time, if you're Katie, I'm sorry. Traffic, We're going to have to go. There should be a study. There should be okay. a study to. to I don't vet. disagree. I don't disagree. I, I, it, it's, it's it was proposed as an emergency access at road. The, at the last meeting, it was an offhand remark that, oh, wouldn't this be great to allow the construction trucks because they were talking about 40 trucks a day to use this as an access road. And you know what, Katie, I have to, uh, yeah. for, for time. It's, it's, it's for security. You know, I agree. don't want so, people So, to stop. To the fire chief, do you have any thoughts in particular on that? And I do need you to come forward if, for so folks at home can hear you. I don't know that we have any examples where we've restricted it to no access. It's an alternative for me, uh -huh. so. Um, I, I'm okay either way. Okay, thank you. <coughs> a very important point. Better be quick. The same board, most members, same fire chief, were against open access on the secondary access road on Legacy Farms North Senior Living. We had took a lot of debate about adding that in uh, so that they could access from Wilson Street in case of an emergency. That road is emergency only. And we're talking about emergency only for a gas uh, tank uh, camp that is far more uh, at risk than those homes are. Um, to me, it's very straightforward. So uh, hold on, please. OK, thank you. Sorry, just a quick comment on that. The residents didn't want it as an access. Yeah, this is a safety this is issue. The no, um, this, is, this is a safety issue no, the in my mind. Want these. I'm, I'm just saying, we, we did right not here. contemplate it as a board. I, I think it's kind of, it's quick, 
So. Shoddy work, to be honest with you. I, I, Go I, ahead. Um, may I just very quickly, just, yeah. just two, two points, because I, I want to clear this, is that workers that ent enter the facility must be DOT drug screened and background checked. So the idea that just that any individual just accesses through this facility <coughs> is, is not true. The, the other thing is this is not a gate that has, would have a motor operator or anything like that. So physically somebody would have to go let them in. And then three, particularly during construction, as I think we discussed during the walk down, there will be maintained an inner security fence. So the traffic that would be entering in that gate during construction would not have access to the facility um, by the design. So. Um, okay, thank you, I appreciate that. Sure. Can I move that we uh, vote on ranks number nine? Uh, uh, sure. Can, hmm? I second this? Okay. Against the two four. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks, Carol. I, I think, I think we knew that, but I appreciate it. So, I, um, I'm sorry, I no. will. It, are, are you ready for a vote on this? I just want to clarify one thing. You've, sure. You've, you've, you've referred to it as an emergency access road. Mm -hmm. um, all of their documentation that I've seen refers to it as a secondary access road. Okay. So we uh, talked about it in terms of emergency access road the entire time. At least that's how I was. Mm -hmm. Uh, how it was introduced to me. I think you've won. So, all those in favor? Uh, uh, aye. What are we voting on, sorry? The conditions? Oh, okay. uh, what, somebody should permit. move the stormwater permit, yes. So moved. Second. Without condition nine, just to be clear. Yep. Is there a second? Oh, second. Um, Discussion? Sure. So what additional access beyond the construction equipment on that construction project is going to be, what additional vehicle traffic will be using this secondary access road? Quite honestly, I can't think of it. Uh, we did discuss during the site walk down that there are, I think, weekly a nitrogen truck delivery, I suppose, during the winter, we had said, because of the incline to the, the loop, truck to the, the truck traffic to come in and out perhaps that would be a better road if if that was kind of a icy slope and but, but I don't know if that even makes sense necessarily because again it's a gravel road and it's not paved so quite honestly I don't foresee that access being used at all outside of the construction and emergency use I just I'm very hesitant to to, to I guess commit to a strict limitation on it Anybody else? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Aye. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. We will certainly be back next time with more information. <coughs> um, will you do this act thing for a minute? I'm going to get water. Yes. So, Zach. A couple of things. Let me get to the page. Mr. Co-Chair, I, I, I do need to run. I'm sorry. It's, uh, uh, Frank, acknowledged. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you guys in a weeks. All right. So I think we wanted to talk about Zach. There were a couple of things. There were uh, a couple of open spaces that are there. There's a couple of individuals that have raised their hand to participate. Uh, here we go. It's in the memo page. Yeah, so this is on page nine. Yep. The following individuals have expressed interest in serving on Zach in the following capacities. Mr. Cattino, <coughs> at-large member to serve a one-year term. Ms. Shaw, Board of Appeals liaison to serve a one-year term. Um, so those are two spots. And then the following, um, there's a couple open spots. One is an at-large to serve a two-year term. And then five non-associate members to serve a one-year term. It should actually just say associate members. Okay, not, not, not members. Okay, so five associate members. Um, so, probably the first order of business would be to discuss Mr. Patino and Ms. Shaw and their application <coughs> for um, to be moved on to the Zone Advisory Committee. So, any questions 
regarding those two individuals, I think my sense here is we could kind of discuss both of them, and if they, if we feel that it's appropriate, we could make a motion or probably just vote on having Mr. Catino and Ms. Shaw as members for a one-year term on ZAC. So that would be the first order of business. The second order of business would be to probably discuss the remaining vacant seats. Okay. So <clears throat> any discussion on Mr. Catino and Ms. Shaw for um, positions on Zach? I think that we just move, move okay, the no discussion. Well, I'll make a motion to um, uh, approve uh, John <coughs> and Martin Shaw for one year terms on Zach. So moved. All right. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstain. So passes. Ms. Shaw and Mr. Catino are uh, appointed for one year terms. All right, the second element here is uh, one at-large member to serve a two-year term, there's a vacancy there, and then the five associate members to serve one-year terms. Uh, is that a discussion topic? I don't no, think so. I think so. it's just a matter that, you know, we have those openings. We acknowledge it. Get right. out there and recruit. Right. <laughs> What's that? Get out there and recruit. Recruit, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I think, so the first meeting is next week. What is um, the first meeting, date and time? The, November 5th, uh, 7 p.m. Is it going to be here or is it ever the Here in this meeting room? Okay. okay. So um, I would encourage any planning board members to attend. It's, uh, it's a, a great good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it will be televised this year, right? So we could watch it later, right? I don't know. <laughs> it, should be, it should be possible, certainly. I we said that. We, we, we said we were going to definitely try, but I don't know. We didn't know we were going to be meeting here. Yep. November 5th, I'm sorry, what time? 7 p.m. I was just going to add that I think the associate members, those are people that might be newer to the committee and could join really at any time during the year and get to know them more. So I, there's no hurry. To it gives us flexibility. What is our total number then? Is it 12 or something? <laughs> no, what is our total number that we have currently? Elaine, do you have that? The number of people? So it's nine? Nine total, but two have one vacancy. So, is it so we have eight people. Okay. That's interesting. Right, last year we had twenty. I know. Right, so I know. This is a better thing, actually. I, I, I agree. It, it <laughs> yeah. may take a little bit of time. Yeah. For it to, to kind of take hold. So yeah. I, I somebody jokingly said recruit. It's it's not a bad thing to be able to kind of look for people in the town that are interested in getting involved and having them even just to observe right. uh, for a meeting. No, truly. Um, I don't know if anybody uh, who is not currently planning on serving on the ZAC from this board wants to sort of step into that ninth spot. It does sometimes make it nicer to have an odd number. I think I'm already there, aren't I? Are you there? Did You, you no. had said you would if, um, if you were needed. So I, I'm not there? But no. Number nine. Oh. Number nine. Yeah. What a relief. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll move that Carol jump in as Second. the ninth member. <laughs> so Carol, did you want the two-year term or the I'm sorry? Did you want the two-year term? Or oh, yes. Term? Definitely two-year term. I'm nominating uh, her for the I'll two associate if that's the way you want to go. No, I'm nominating you for the two-year term. I'll do the two-year. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Carol. So, that's amazing. So to clarify, Carol is... Being nominated for the two year at large position, not the liaison position. Is that correct? Sounds lovely. Uh, that is correct. That is the at large position that was vacant, uh, serving for a two year term. Uh, and I'd also like to make the point that Carol has experience on Zach, so it's very nice to, that you are stepping up in that way. It's a great addition. Do we need to vote officially or no? We should. Yeah, we, we should. Uh, and actually, so you're not on the I've been trying to entice him to no. do that. Is there a motion on the floor that I entertain to Second. 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 Carol, is a, a I, 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 with enthusiasm. Abstain. I'm an abstain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, truly appreciate Almost that though, Carol. Thank truly. you, Carol. Is that our last item? Is that Nani? Yes, and that is our, uh, yes. Just to vote to close the hearing on the oh, thank you. 
I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing on 55 Wilson Street, the stormwater um, plan for the access road. So moved. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. I absolutely we forgot that. And then I'll entertain a motion to close the meeting. Wait, oh, no. Nope. Were there any other thoughts on what Zach should be working on this year? So uh, that's a really good uh, point, and I think that maybe, if anybody has anything like right now, certainly shoot it out. I just closed my computer, but I had three different things. Oh, excellent. <laughs> so but can you, you, I'll send it to you. If, if we send one way, way no conversation back and forth, just send the ideas one way, and then if you want to more fully explain them, go to the first meeting. So it's explained at the meeting. Okay. Yeah. All right. I wrote it down. <laughs> okay. But anybody should feel free to send ideas forward. Who should, who should we send these to? Mary. Mary. Okay. Sorry, don't they normally have a meeting where they ask for ideas? And they, I imagine that they yes, will do that the meeting, as well. But I really yeah. you know, wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I understand. <coughs> At least have something. To yep, understood. Yeah. I know I've said this before, but I think it's really important to heavily advertise that community input put piece. Of mm -hmm. when, whenever you're having that meeting where you want the input, make sure everyone knows. Because people find out later, and they're like, oh, I missed my chance to suggest an idea. So in this new format, though, that's a, I, it, yes. So I would encourage anybody who has burning issues or ideas to come forward soon, right? But in this new format, I think we could accommodate new ideas. I, it would not necessarily, right, it would not necessarily drive for the next town meeting, mm -hmm. but it would certainly um, drive the process in general. I, I think I'd encourage the Zach as well to have a periodic, I mean, in this informant, a periodic public, you know, maybe every um, six months or more frequent. A call for ideas. Yeah, call yeah. For ideas. yeah, no, I think that's a great idea. Quick comment, did anybody go to that? Presentation by the state for the redoing of the intersection of 495 and Mass Pike. I didn't know about it. I've been trying to email. Oh, Elaine went. I saw the posters. I saw it in the paper after the fact. Elaine, tell us about it. It's a large, expensive project. Yeah. <laughs> Where uh, it's 495 in the Pike. Yeah. So there are um, there are now three alternatives that will be narrowed down to one. And I think that's a public comment. Um, I do have the YouTube link was in the paper from the independent, so I'm going to watch that. Can you, s uh, do you have the YouTube link? The documents are now posted on their website, so whatever they presented at the hearing is, is now on their website. So you, I, can I ask one question or is it too late in the day and night? Just, no, go ahead. Just quickly. A true court relief is the, the best way to do it, but I think there's concerns with there's, property. There's uh, a lot of wet. A lot of wetlands and an ACEC, so an area of critical environmental concern. Mm -hmm. So it, it can't be a true quillow belief ever, but they have very creative ideas. Okay, I'll try to attend. Um, can we just get that YouTube link huh? if it's easy? I didn't see it in the paper. No, David, I didn't David, read it. You, you go from one up? highway to the next, just go like that. You know, go off the highway, to, down to where a toll booth was, <coughs> yeah, and yeah, then yeah. back over another bridge that probably doesn't even need to be built and maintained. Compared to what there is, what's there not yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can yeah. you forward us all the YouTube link? The link, link surely. I'd like to see what's going on. Surely. Right. There are some concerns for the town with respect to mitigation, both visually and from noise, for the neighborhoods in the area to consider as well. So that's part Who of Who are the most affected neighborhoods? I would say the Roosevelt Farms area and Food Street. Uh, in, that, in that area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are now. they? Are the neighbors individually notified? Are there, is there, does I mean, the number of them did attend? They were. Mm -hmm. They were invited. Okay. Any any implication? I know it's a little ways away, but the town wells are very close. Any implication to the town water no. supply? No. Just not close enough. No. Right in the middle of Cedar Swamp, isn't it? Yeah. The state's first area of critical environmental concern. Not for nothing. I move to adjourn. Oh. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.